Hey everybody, what is going on? It is a Tuesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. Before we get started, you know I like to do this, man. I like to mention a bunch of our sponsors. I'll start with Seven Mile Casino. You know, one of the things I was, uh, I got a note in an email that the um, Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, now inside Seven Mile Casino, has this great brunch. I've been talking about it. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays. Um, the short rib Benny with freshly poached eggs. Sounds pretty good. Or the Choco chocolate chip pancakes stacked high and drizzled with a chocolate ganache. Oy vey. I'd have to run from, from, you know, Bay Boulevard, just minutes from downtown San Diego, all the way back to Solana Beach if I eat all that. But man, that sounds ridiculous. Sammy's at Seven Mile. So much more than pizza. SevenMileCasino.com. Hey, I want to mention I Thrive MD. As a matter of fact, Dr. Samir Damani will make his first appearance on the show today. And he'll talk to us more about testosterone and what I've been talking about, which is NAD injections and the burst of energy that guys like myself, over 40 years old, testosterone's a little low. We need to improve our, our testosterone, our energy levels. Dr. Samir Damani will talk to us today about uh, I Thrive MD. And here's the number, 858 858- 240-1497, 858-240-1497. You'll hear more about that later today in the show. You'll meet Dr. Samir Damani. Uh, let me talk about BetUS real quick. Last night was Monday Night Football. This upcoming week, there's just some monster games that are already out there. It's only Tuesday, and we're going to talk about them as the week goes on. But I want to remind everybody that BetUS is the place to go, mostly because they've been in business for 25 years, and you want to know for sure that you're going to get paid. Here's a phone number, 1-800-79-BETUS, 1-800-79-BETUS. If you're a crypto person and you use cryptocurrency, you get up to 200% in bonuses, regular cash, 125% in bonuses. And of course, I always remind everybody, if you've got any kind of gambling-related problems, 1-800-GAMBLER, but betus.com is the website to use. And uh, lastly, I mentioned Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Uh, we'll find out from Alex today if he's got any progress. He's in escrow. On his first condo in North Park, he waited and waited. He found the neighborhood he wanted. He found all the things inside the place that he wanted. And he's in escrow. And who knows, man, like 30 to 60 days from now, he might be living in a whole new place. And lastly, I'll mention Tory Holistics. Uh, we're getting to the end of the month. So our promo code's about to change. You only have a few days left. Brown Man is the promo code. You'll save 25, uh, you'll save 20% when you spend $75 or more, 20% savings when spending $75 or more at Tory Holistics. There's lots of different places and lots of choices around San Diego now, but this is, is our group. These are our people. Tory Holistics, shout out to our girl, Ruthie. Tory Holistics is the place to go and Brown Man saves you 20% whether you're in the store or you're ordering online. Let's get started, man. I feel great today. Let's get rolling. Hey, great friends. What is happening? Today is Tuesday. I actually don't know the date. Anybody know the date here? I'll find it really quick. Um, today's the 28th. Oh, thank you, Browner. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, today is the 28th of September. Glad to have everybody along, everybody who's listening on the Mightier 1090 on the radio airwaves around Southern California. Everybody who is just now joining our YouTube chat as predicted yesterday was a big crowd. By the way, a lot of people talking yesterday in the YouTube chat about Grande and uh, this new house that he's buying down in North Park. And we'll get into that later on. But uh, so for everybody listening on the radio, everybody watching on YouTube, for anybody that tonight will be catching us on television, look, you got to decide. Are you investing your time later tonight into the Padres and the Dodgers and the final six games of the season? You'll decide. If not, we'll be on television, Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara, part of the Cox your view network and as always you can find us anywhere on all the different audio podcast platforms either my breath smells to high hell today i'm not really sure i haven't eaten a damn thing all day okay either my breath smells so bad or or i don't know man like maybe i maybe i've infected the microphone in some way i don't know man like i'm just right now my 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 mouth is getting hate mail from my nose cuz it's just horrendous at least that's the way i smell it thankfully nobody's nearby me Everybody's at their own place right now. Bad, really bad. Uh, all right, listen. We are in the Seven Mile Casino studios, sevenmilecasino.com. And you can uh, remember that Sammy's Restaurant and Bar is now inside Seven Mile Casino, just minutes from downtown San Diego. So Sammy's is a whole lot more than just pizza, especially when it's in the Seven Mile Casino. I got a lot of stuff on my mind today. Monday Night Football last night, the Dallas Cowboys over the Philadelphia Eagles. 
I'm not even so sure I really want to get too deep into the game per se. I think I'm more into the Peyton Manning, Eli Manning alternative broadcast on ESPN. I didn't realize that in week one, they had about 800,000 viewers. And in week two, they were up to almost 2 million viewers. I think the Peyton Eli uh, experiment is going very, very well for ESPN. I keep thinking to myself, if I were Lewis Riddick and I finally got to like the top of the television mountain, you know, where I'm a, a, an announcer on Monday Night Football. I grew up my whole life dreaming of one day possibly playing on Monday Night Football. I never even thought about being an announcer on Monday Night Football. Now I am. I'm an announcer on Monday Night Football, and ESPN is competing with itself. So rather than saying, look, everybody just come to this one broadcast on ESPN, Steve Levy, Lewis Riddick, Brian Greasy, instead, ESPN is actually saying to the audience, if you like the traditional, come over here. If you like Peyton and Eli, come over here. And so we've still got the numbers as a company, but we're dividing them between two different broadcasts. And I wonder to myself, if I were in the shoes of Steve Levy, Lewis Riddick, and Brian Greasy, would I be like annoyed that the company has a competition for us rather than driving everybody to us? I, I really, I, like I said, I've been trying to figure this whole thing out because I am watching the Peyton Eli broadcast much more than I am watching the standard broadcast. So we'll get into a bunch of football stuff today. As a matter of fact, speaking of football, you know, we talked about the Chargers yesterday and giving them some credit for going on the road and winning in Kansas City, which is a very hard thing for me to do as the card carrying president of the Charger Hater Club. But I love now the post game analysis and the former NFL referees that said, hey, look, on a Hail Mary, I don't care how much time is left in the game, end of the half, end of the game, pass interference is pass interference. And the Chargers secondary should have been flagged for pass interference. And had they been flagged for pass interference, who knows how that game might have changed. So I know everybody yesterday wanted to give credit to the Chargers for going on the road and beating Kansas City at Arrowhead. But, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are looking at that saying, well, there probably should have been more to that game. But that's, you know, that's ancient history for sure. Uh, and, and the Chiefs are going to have to get themselves back together. And the Chargers are going to have to start wondering and concentrating, rather, on the, the Raiders this week. And the Raiders got to get it together because they just kind of skirted by Miami after spotting them a big lead. So I got a lot on my mind. I can keep on rambling, but I'm going to get to the guys. Here we go. Say hola to mi hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro Padilla. He's repping the 805, Oxnard, California's favorite son, Ventura County in La Casa. And on a day where the Lakers are having their preseason media day earlier this morning, grande rocking the Laker hoodie. Grande, hola, como esta? Yeah, I'm glad you bring up my hoodie because that is my first thought. Uh, hoodie season uh, just was thrashed upon us without any proper heads up. So this is last season's hoodies that you're seeing these last couple of days. So I need to go shopping for some hoodies. I wasn't ready for, you know, 60 degree weather all, so quickly. I, it caught me by surprise. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad it's here. It's my favorite weather. You know, in Oxnard, I grew up with fog every morning, uh, some uh, clouds in the morning, and sometimes the sun came out and then it was always nice and cool. So this is my favorite type of weather. Um, but yes, excited that basketball this is my favorite time of the year scott i think that when you have the nfl season in full swing you have baseball playoffs you have college football and then you're gonna have basketball in about a month like real basketball in about a month i mean this is every sport that you could want and if you watch hockey that stuff starts too there's soccer going on every single day it feels like if you're a sports fan october is the month and i know we're not there yet but it's gonna be this is my favorite time man fall is the best when it comes to sports. I'm very excited about everything that's happening in the world of sports. And now I even got F1 to watch too. So that's been crazy this last weekend as well. I have never been more excited for an NBA basketball season. And it's not really because I'm excited about a team or the league. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you straight up for real, homeboy. Um, all this vaccination talk in the preseason, and I know a lot of these teams are just getting underway with practices, and the media is peppering the players with, are you or are you not vaccinated? And for those that aren't, they're just pounding away at these guys. Well, what's your problem, pal? You know, And, and I just think that the, um, the NBA media 
is feeling like those that cover the league and those that are at the games. I think that what those folks are feeling is so for me to go to the game and me to cover the team, they require me to be vaccinated, but they don't require you, the players, to be vaccinated. In other words, the security guys have to be, and the coaches have to be, and the trainers have to be, and all the fans have to be. But you, the players on the floor, you get a different set of rules than we, everybody else. And again, we is not just purely the media. We is also, you know, like I said, all the ancillary people that are kind of working at the game. And I think that the media is looking at the players with this attitude of, so I'm willing to do it. Whether I liked it or I didn't like it, I'm willing to do it, but you're not willing to do it. And I and we'll go deeper into this later on in the show because there's a lot of these NBA players that are being interviewed in these media days. And, you know, some of them like to play games like Kyrie Irving. He is the most annoying guy in sports. And others are just straight up truthful. And you kind of respect them for being so. So we'll, we'll go deeper into it later in the day. Again, I go back to last year when someone asked LeBron James at a press conference if he was vaccinated and he said, that's a personal decision. I'll be discussing it with my family and I'm not sharing it publicly. That to me was the beginning because that empowered every NBA player to say, screw you, I'm not getting it. Um, most of which, by the way, most of the players have gotten it, but the few that, that aren't, I think were empowered that way. And I really wish that LeBron James was more of a, um, a global community thinking leader and thinking about, you know what? We're in the middle of something here, and the best way to end it is for all of us to get vaccinated. And I feel like if LeBron came out and said, I'm vaccinated, um, I feel like everybody in the NBA would follow suit, except Kyrie, because he would just do it out of spite, I think. Anyway, we'll talk more about that as the afternoon goes on. But I'm more excited about this NBA season than ever before. Alex, you know why? Why? Why do you think? Mm, I have no because idea. Because the Lakers will play probably two to three weeknights each week between now oh, and yeah, like June of next year, you know? And that means for yeah. me, when I'm working up in LA, rather than being on the air every night from four to 7 PM. Okay. Live. Um, that means for me, I'll probably be on two to three nights a week. And that's going to be a nice welcome yeah. break, man. Cause I am. I remember from that thing in the, I remember in the playoffs, you were pissed off because they got eliminated in the first round. You got to get back to work. Oh dude. I remember the, short, short, off season. There was a day that my girlfriend Rachel said to me, um, "Let's go to a uh, a green place. What, what like a tree place? What do they call these places where you get trees? Uh, tree place? Yeah, that a nursery. Yes, <laughs> yes, a nursery. They sell trees Thank at nursery. Browner. Thank you, Browner. Nur trees, plants, flowers. You know, oh. green stuff. Okay. You know. And I was there on a Saturday afternoon. And I tweeted at LeBron. Thanks a lot, LeBron. Thanks a lot, man. Because you guys got eliminated by, by Phoenix. I'm here buying freaking, I don't even know what, succulents at a nursery. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we're just oh, getting rolling. Man. We're just getting going. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios here of Kaplan and Crew along with Grande. And here comes the brown man. Six foot seven inches tall. Twisted steel. Sex appeal. Big sacks. Big Macs. V. Hot take machine and a man known internationally to the ladies as the Brown saw. This brother brings a street cred from the Seven Mile Casino Podcast Shed. Here he is, South Side of Chicago, representing Big Brown, JB, the Brown Man, John Browner, in the house. Hit list. Hmm. I can't. I can't wait to get to some of the. Uh, the the NBA COVID player stuff, but I, I look, man. I, I don't want to go back in time. I don't want to turn this into a Kaepernick discussion. This is about Des Bryant, and not only is this about Des Bryant, this is about these new player uh, interview platforms. Okay, uh, um, Brandon Marshall and Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, whatever you would like to refer to him as, they have their own platform and where they interview players, they interview rappers, entertainers, things of that nature about current issues. And they're real discussions. I like the show. So I don't want this to be misconstrued about what, what I, I see think. The show. 
Where do mm-hmm. I see it? Is it a, is it a is it a YouTube show? Is it a TV show? Is it a streaming I've, show? I've Where, only seen it on YouTube. It? I haven't okay. uh, YouTube and Instagram. I've never seen the show anywhere else. So whatever original platform that the mm-hmm. show is on, they need to promote better because I mm-hmm. don't know how to find the show in its mm-hmm. entirety on whatever platform it's originally put out for consumption. Mm-hmm. So I enjoy the conversations that they have on the show. So I'm not 100% against player platform shows. I am against them when they don't ask proper questions. And this is where journalism comes in. This is where you need actual people helping these dudes navigate the rough parts of an interview. Because Des Bryant was on the show. It's a 40-second clip. And this is what Des Bryant had to say about Colin Kaepernick. I, I respect Colin Kaepernick. But there's one thing that I don't respect. And I said it when I get the opportunity and to get on the stage to say it, I would say it. And I love him to death. So it ain't no hate or nothing like that. But brother, you had the biggest opportunity in the world to create jobs, build jobs, give jobs to people. The people that you was talking about, the people that that you so-called standing up for, the people who stood beside you, the people who lost their jobs because of you. Where you at? I ain't heard from you. He brought the awareness, and that's why I respect him. But what's the call to action? There wasn't one. There wasn't no call to action. We had to fight the- hmm. now, this is ignorance. So, what, so what's, this the, is what's ignorance the issue? At the height. the hmm. idea that Colin Kaepernick said he would create jobs, which he never did, by the way, the, was that what he said he would do was create awareness for police brutality in black and brown communities. That was the original mission of taking the knee. What Des Bryant is talking about is very funny to me because Des Bryant was the person who did not kneel when when other players were kneeling out of respect and, and solidarity with Colin Kaepernick. Des Bryant went to so far as to put on Twitter, Twitter, I got to feed my kids. Okay, I got to feed my kids. This is what he put on Twitter in response to why he wouldn't kneel, why he wouldn't take a knee during the national anthem. So Des Bryant wants to know what the, where, the, where the jobs at, Colin Kaepernick. Do you cost people jobs? Anybody who took a knee and, and, and solidarity with Colin Kaepernick knew what they were getting into. The fact that he's asking where are the jobs is just his stupidity coming out again in a very large way. And I don't like the fact that you've got two other ex-NFL players on the show and not one of them. Not one of them knew enough about the situation to say, well, hey, doll, he, was, he wasn't out there to create jobs. It was more about awareness. Like, it, 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 it's such, Des Bryant is a stupid person. I'm just going to be very blank and, and very, very straightforward. Des Bryant is a stupid person saying stupid things on which he doesn't even have the time after all this, after this long run of what happened to educate himself. He's been sitting on that comment. For how long? How long has he been sitting on that comment to say that? Educate yourself, man. Educate yourself. And and to the response of whether or not he created jobs, he did, but it wasn't enough to really make a splash on anything because he's got a couple of organizations and a couple of foundations. So it's less than 10 jobs that he has created. But Des Bryant looking for Colin Kaepernick to go sprinkling jobs around around the neighborhood like he Walmart really needs to turn his fire towards somebody else because he sounds really stupid and ignorant. Hope you feel better, man. I feel great now. Okay, because I have no interest in the story. Zero, zippo, I got no comment. Did move I, got to no the next feed, I got no feedback. I literally, I didn't, I haven't seen the show. And and it's you, it's show. funny. It's funny, though, you said that you didn't want to bring back like an old story. And yet we're talking about uh, Brandon Marshall, who's a former player who I haven't seen in a really long time. Uh, Chad Ochocinco, who I only see on social media. Um, mm-hmm. Des Bryant, I didn't even recognize him when when I saw the clip. And talking about Colin Kaepernick. I mean, it is just like, it's so, um, I don't know, it's not it's not something that I've got a lot of interest in. And it's, not, it's certainly not something I've got a lot of exposure to right now. So I don't know exactly why these guys were, were talking about this necessarily. I don't know. It just doesn't 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 move my needle, you know. I don't. How about you, Alex? What do you think about all that? Uh, I don't care. Not even a little bit. Yeah. 
Back to you. I know, Browner. I usually <laughs> love your 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 hit lists. They're usually so great. They usually like spark a whole conversation. You know, today I got nothing for you, man. Well, maybe this one one for you, player. It's all good. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's all good, baby. Yeah. I'm not trying to be you, a. Player. I'm not trying. To, I wasn't trying to slam Browner about what he chose. I just. I think like. What's the point of bringing it up right now? Like it's not even topical. Not not you, Brown. I'm saying them. Like yes. it's not even topical. Like whatever. Okay. Like well, are we then, still talking about Colin Kaepernick well, but, and what he did or did not do? Five, six, seven, whatever it was. I know, but then you know what? We're we're saying it like, hey, it's not you, Brown, or it's not you. you know, it's, but it is you. But it is you. I mean, because you. But did it's his hit it. list. Yeah. He's yeah, mad right. about it, which right. I'm cool with. Right. Yeah, That's right. But a lot of times he's mad about things that everybody cares about. Right. A little bit. Right. <laughs> Today he's mad about something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll get to the we'll, we'll get to the, we'll get to the knew, players and vaccines right. and and media I days. Mean, so uh, you know. At the end of the show yesterday, he was like going off on players. So I'm sure today he's going to be all popping a vein out of his head about something. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, listen, Not LeBron me... though. You what? Not LeBron though. No. Well, maybe Scott, but not. I mean, he actually admitted it that he got the vaccine, which was Le- he LeBron done a long time ago. LeBron admitted he got the vaccine, but man, oh man, ask him to sit at a press conference and tell the world, or or let people know, hey, listen, like to all of my colleagues, my peers, my brothers in the NBA, um, guys, I've gotten the vaccine, and for the greater good you should probably get the vaccine too. And by the way, if you don't care about other people and you don't care about the outside people, you know, when I say outside, I mean outside of your organization. If you don't care about anybody outside of your organization, if nothing else, get the vaccine for everybody that's inside your organization. So we'll talk about it as the afternoon goes on. I know a lot of people around the country are going to have really strong opinions. Last night, I happened to be watching after the uh, Monday Night Football game. I was watching Scott Van Pelt and his ESPN Sports Center. And he had a really long diatribe about the NBA players and getting the vaccine and those that aren't and what they're saying and how this is becoming the story of the preseason. And uh, and I thought to myself, well, I don't see Scott Van Pelt making any appearances on KUSI anywhere in the near future. No, no, they're, they're, they're anti-vax, so... All right, listen, we got a great show coming up today. I do want to mention uh, our people at Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. If you are looking to buy, sell, refi, or position yourself to buy, especially for the first time, these are the guys that can help you. I say guys, guys and girls that can help you get to the finish line. Alex, I am so stoked for you and this, this condo that you're now in escrow on in North Park. Um, are you getting excited? I mean, I, I know we're only 24 hours into the escrow mm-hmm. process beginning, but man, that is so exciting. Um, we got the green light from the inspection yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one thing that needed to be fixed. Everything else was, we got the green light on. Um, and we locked in our interest rate today. And would you get it at? Um, what was the number? It was a three, three. Rates wow. have gone up significantly. Oh, wow. Significantly. Wow. Uh, um, what else? What else is that? There's a lot happening, dude. I, I don't know, know dude. I'm literally, if I were... I'm literally like in the process of like a million things with this place. Like, yeah. And I know that there's more and more coming. Like, so, uh, uh, yes, I'm excited uh, because it seems like everything's going along smoothly at the moment. Okay. Very good. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. Gary Cooper can help you like he's helped Alex. This is so exciting. All right. We're just getting underway. Earlier today, Jace Tingler, the Padres manager, spoke. What did he say? He doesn't sound like a guy who's getting fired. We'll get there next. Stick around. Great friends, what's happening? It is a Tuesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We are broadcasting from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com, and Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, now in Seven Mile Casino. Sammy's, a lot more than just pizza when they're inside Seven Mile Casino. Come on down and visit Bay Boulevard, minutes from downtown San Diego. Great poker, blackjack, college football games on Saturday, NFL games on Sunday, phenomenal restaurant and bar with Sammy's, and that view of the Bay of Chula Vista. Come on down and visit Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Okay, guys, let's just jump right in. Grande, Brown Man, I'm going to ask both of you guys a question, and then we'll get to it. Here goes. 
The Padres and the Dodgers tonight for three. And the Padres will finish off with the Giants for three. So these were two series that literally like 60 days ago, we were circling on the calendar saying the whole season could come down to this. There could be positioning for the division title, for the wild card. But as we know, this whole thing blew up right in our faces and the Padres are not playing for the wild card. They're not playing for the division. I don't even think they're attempting to play spoiler. If if there's one thing I would suppose that the Padres are playing for right now, and no Browner, it's not for Tatis to become the MVP, at least not in my opinion. The only thing I can see them even playing for right now is, hey guys, let's finish above 500. What does that do for us? Not really anything. Makes me feel like a winner rather than a loser when it's all said and done. But I don't really know what this Padres team is playing for right now. So I'm going to throw it to you guys and ask this question. Question. I did it myself there, Alex. (laughs) I guess what I'm asking you guys is really ultimately with six games to go, And against the two teams that are headed towards the playoffs, the two biggest division rivals that the Padres have, rival teams, rival cities, are you investing any more time into the Padres and these final six games? Will you be watching tonight when the Padres start this series against the Dodgers? Because my answer is I'm kind of addicted and I don't think I can really help myself. I probably will watch the final six games. I will admit tonight. I am headed down to the Mesa College in San Diego because my daughter's playing in a soccer game. So I'm not going to be watching. I'll probably be following on my phone. But to you guys, are you in? Are you out? Are you watching the final six Padre games? What do you guys say? I'll tell you why I'm in. I would love to. It's not going to happen. But I would love the opportunity to sweep the Dodgers and knock them out for the NL West division title. That is my dream for these next three days i don't think it'll happen because the padres are playing so poorly and they have no pitching you darvish pitches tonight he seems to do very well against the dodgers so i will tune in tonight i will tune in the next two days because i always like padres dodgers um but if they get blown out today and the dodger stadium and dodger fans are trolling like i would if if i were them probably you're gonna lose me but if they win today, I'm in, man. I mean, the, the ability to spoil the Dodgers season and you still need to finish above 500 just for your own pride, that, that'll get me to tune in today. Okay. To the Brown man. No. No. Zero. <laughs> zero. No. I won't watch another game today, Fire Tingler. Period. <laughs> I'm not watching another game. Not a second. You will not get another. Not I won't even check next you. year, huh? I won't check your score on ESPN. I, I will watch the Tatis MVP speech. I'll watch that, but that's not necessarily Padres baseball, but that is Padre information being intaken by me. So I'll do that. But until they fire Tingler, I ain't no more time for me, bro. No more time. I refuse. Hold on. I gotta I I gotta I gotta lock you in on that statement though. You will what, not what? watch another Padres game until Jace Tingler's fired. Yes. Okay, now that includes next season yes. if he's not if he's returned. Yes. Because I believe it will be the same result. I don't okay. believe in rewarding people who who continuously are bad at their jobs, and yet you continue to let them do the job. Mm-hmm. Like, I, mm-hmm. so so okay. Just want to again, I, Alex. I like the phrase you used. You want to lock it in. Mm-hmm. So lock it in. So like I locked in my interest rate. I want to lock it in. Right. So Joe Rigby, I know you're watching right now on YouTube. Okay, Joe, this is going to be another hot take. I he emails me take? every Friday with the updated Excel sheet. Oh, nice. Every Friday. Nice. I got a new, I got, you said a lot of things, dude. <laughs> yeah. But this one's a good one. This is good. I, I like this one. I, I like Browner's position, position here. He will not watch another Padres game so long as Jace Tingler is the manager of this ball club. I like it. Stand by it. Mm-hmm. I respect mm-hmm. it. Live it. And, uh, and I, I'm with you, Browner. Now I, I'm going to watch games, even if Jace Tingler is a manager, because for me, I find that to be entertaining, but I like the fact that you're out and Alex, I find it super interesting that all year yes. long Browner was the hype man for the Padres and he was going to mm-hmm. kick you and me out. We're not invited to the world series parade, as you recall, mm-hmm. right? You know, correct. And yet 
here I am. And we laugh. Being willing to say yeah. World Series. Right. World Series. Come on. We've mm-hmm. been here before. We know this movie. We've we've seen it before many times. Pop. Browner got his cherry popped. Yep. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. You say got that your Padres cherry popped. Yes, yeah, I wouldn't say that did. necessarily. You man. believed when we didn't believe because we knew. Belief. We knew yeah. what was coming. Yeah, I believe. We're like we've seen this film before. I believed because I thought that they had the roster to make it happen, and I still and you, think and that you they still do. do. Yeah, you believe they have the roster. Yeah, yes, you're not absolutely. alone. See, you're not alone, and, by the way. And that's where we. And that's where the three of us differ. I believe that they have enough to win. I think that they mm-hmm. were grossly mismanaged. And I think the injuries really got to them. I know other teams well, in the division had injuries as well, and they seemed to figure it out. But again, they have better coaching. They had a better staff who was able to help tinker and pull and push in positions that we were not able to do so. And thus, we have what we have. Mm-hmm. Well, when I say you're not alone, I'm not talking about fans. Although, big time shout out to the fans because they saw this collapse in front of their eyes, and it was still a packed pet go almost every night. Yeah. Like Saturday, Sunday. Nothing to play for, and that place was rocking. Anyway, I still think a lot of people are like me that when I said I use the word addicted, I'm addicted to the season. There's only mm-hmm. six games left to go. I feel like I've come this far. I got to see it all the way through, uh, and I feel like there are a lot of Padre fans that that never believed that this magnitude of a collapse was really coming. So they bought their tickets, they made their plans. And going to Petco Park was always a lot of fun, even when the Padres completely stunk. So now mm-hmm. it's like, okay, they've fallen apart, but I still like to go and I still like to support. But um, I mean, I get it. I was there on Friday yeah. for both one and a half games. So. Yeah. Uh, but what I mean by you're not alone, Browner, is that, um, you know, Jay Tingler also thinks that they have the roster to compete next year as well. Mm. You are you and Jace Tingler are very like minded, Browner. I don't know why you're yeah. giving up on the guy. Stop it. He shouldn't have fumbled the bag then. Listen, I uh, the only thing him and I both have in common, we'd be terrible managers. The only difference is he got the opportunity to actually be terrible at the job. I never will. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. the only thing we got in common. Mm-hmm. Well, Jace Tingler mm-hmm. spoke earlier today as the Padres are getting set to take on the Dodgers and then the Giants, final six games of the season. Games that again we thought would be really meaningful that have turned into complete waste of time again for those of us that are addicted and we, we we're going to see this thing till the end of the marathon but these games are meaningless for the Padres unless you think that Tatis can win the MVP in the final six games as Browner believes and none of us do other than Browner um, and if you think that finishing above 500 is some you know lofty goal that that you know they still want to achieve but earlier today Jace Tingler spoke to the media and uh, Alex has pulled a couple of sound bites Two. Two of them. All right. Uh, he's going to play them for us. We're going to have a chance to comment on what Jace Tingler said. Let's take a look and a listen. This is the the the, the roster one. What does he think about the roster next year? What is it? What do they need? Overall depth. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're going to need pitching, um, and and then we're going to need uh, you know bounce back from from a group of our players. We think we've got you know from a position player standpoint, uh, we, we we think we've got got a group to win championships uh we obviously have to make some minor adjustments we've got to uh have guys perform um you know up to what what they're capable of doing a bigger group of that and so uh but 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 from um you know who it is who comes in uh, i think we'll have a little bit of flexibility to bring in some guys but i don't think we're as far off as 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 maybe at times what it feels Mm mm-hmm I don't know who's doing this interview on Sirius Satellite Radio. This is uh, Sirius XM, mm-hmm. and I don't know the host, but it is called MLB Power Alley. I don't know, dude, but somebody's breathing real heavy into the microphone, and it's very annoying. Very annoying. Seriously. Like, I thought it was one of us, you know? And and it was like, goodness, guys, can you get away from the mic? Seriously. Like, my daughter, my daughter who's 14, complains to me every day about two things that I do. She hates the way I breathe, which... I don't really hear it. Now, on occasion, I might find myself taking a big old deep breath, and I actually do hear it. Like, if I'm like, you know, I don't know, I'm taking a big deep breath. You know, I can hear that. But she complains about my breathing all the time. And I'll tell you the other thing my 14-year-old daughter complains about all the time, and it really is offensive. I got to be honest with you. She's like, she, she's like, I can't stand the way you chew. She's like, the, the, <laughs> the way you chew and the noise that you make when you're chewing, I can't stand it. Please stop. And I'm like, so you don't want me to breathe, and you don't want me to eat. You must not want me here. 
Yeah. <laughs> those are real important things, young lady. You might need those two things to make it. You got to eat and you got to breathe. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's hear a little more from what the Padres it's, uh, manager has General been. Former general manager Jim Duquette and Mike Farron. All right. Well, well, one of those two guys, or maybe both of them. Man, those dudes can oh. breathe really loud. Both. That's right. All right. Now, what's the, uh, the second clip? Uh, I'm sure all three of us have an opinion on it. Uh, they asked him, what is your self-assessment of the job you have done so far this season? Oh, this is easy. Jace, what are those things that you feel like you want to work on as you assess yourself? Well, I think, you know, looking back, I think there were some areas I could have done a better job and in, in, in taken charge of. I think uh, I could have done a better job with, um, you know, having uh, handling confrontation and, and, and tough conversation, of course, you know, communication and, and all those things. As you look back, I wish there were some things I would have hit, you know, head on. Um, and, you know, these, these, these are some of the things I'm going to be better at, you know, going forward. Mm. All right. Well, again, I don't know what he said because I was focused in on whoever was breathing into the microphone the way they were. Good God, man. You hear that? I know. God, it was just brutal. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Jace Tingler's right. He will be better in the future at handling tough situations. Hopefully it will not be with the Padres. Hopefully it'll, he'll gain his experience. You know, he got his, his two-year degree from the Padres and he can go be a manager somewhere else. But the admission of I didn't handle things head on. Let me explain why he didn't handle things head on because no one respected him. Okay. The Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis, Will Myers, Eric Hosmer. I'm just using those four guys as an example. They don't respect him. They don't look at him and say, you know, like us, he's a former major league player who had a nice career. He really worked his way up to the top to get to a managerial position. He he's he's a guy that I feel like I can really trust, you know, because he's got my back. Instead, the players look at him and here's what they see. They see a guy who was not really one of their peers because he didn't really have a major league playing career. That's okay. Other guys have not necessarily been Hall of Famers who've been good managers, but they look at him and they go, he really wasn't one of us per se. They also look at him and say, he didn't really work his way up through the system necessarily, and certainly not through the organization system. And third, we don't trust him because we know that he was placed and picked by the general manager to come babysit us and then to go tattletale and report upstairs. And we know he's got no power, no authority. He doesn't control who plays where and when. So the players look at Jace Tingler and they don't respect him. That's that's the final word is the players don't respect him. So he could try and handle things head on. But Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis, veteran players and superstar players and big money guys, they're not going to respect him in the future because they already didn't respect him in the past. He can't change that. That's done. And so, um, again, in the future, he may be better at handling things but I'm hopeful that it won't be with the Padres. What'd you guys think? This guy, this guy will be a great manager on a team. That's not like he would be a great manager on the Baltimore Orioles. He'd be fantastic as a manager with zero expectations and zero personalities. I don't want to knock him for admitting what he did wrong. Cause I think one of the parts of improvement is acknowledging where you made mistakes. I fully understand that. I do it all the time, but You've got to be kidding me. Do you put this franchise in the hands to guide it of that man? And you knew that. You, the upper management knew that this guy had deficiencies in very important areas. Like these guys didn't need him to coach them on hitting. They're not going to, like, baseball's difficult. You don't really want to throw a guy off in, in, when it comes to hitting because this, baseball players are so routine. So his job was to keep the temperature of the room light or happy or whatever made them go. That was his responsibility. And he couldn't do it. Right. But he Browner couldn't do it. But, but Browner, if, if you look at a guy like Phil Jackson, who's considered by many to be the greatest coach that the NBA has ever known, you might knock that and say, yeah, but he had Shaq and he had Kobe and he had Michael and he had Scotty and he had all these great teams. 
So he wasn't really that great of a coach. But you see, what Phil Jackson did is he managed personalities. And Jace Tingler doesn't have the ability that Phil Jackson had. He doesn't have the resume. He doesn't have the respect. So I'm with you, Alex. He certainly doesn't sound like a guy that's get that's you know going to be getting fired anytime soon. Which is, which is to me, which is incredibly disappointing because I think the the thing obviously I've said that this roster needs to be not overhauled, but it needs significant improvements in key positions. But I also think that a he has experience now, but it's not like he you can't regain the trust of the clubhouse. How about that? I think he's already lost it. I think he never had it. And I think that's the problem with AJ Preller and his hirings. He's, he's hiring guys that are yes men to AJ. They're not going into this clubhouse to take control and guide them through an entire season. You have to, that is the baseball manager's most important job. I have always said there's no tangible facts of why Preller, uh, Tingler is a terrible or good manager because we're not in the clubhouse where you talk to the guys through slumps where you let guys handle the things that they can handle within or when you need to intervene. Those are things that we can't see, but you could tell Tingler never was qualified to do that for the Padres, as was A.J. Green. So if you – Andy Green. There you go. I'm Him mixing too. A.J. So if you go out and you get a veteran manager, you at least give yourself the chance of him having some sem – semblance of control over the clubhouse which yeah. clearly was a lot more fracture than any of us right in other words you know andy green same exact problems that jace tingler had andy green had but if you would have hired a dave roberts which the padres wouldn't even give him the consideration i'm just using it as an example if you would have hired dave roberts the players would have respected dave roberts as a player and as somebody who had been working his way up in the organization if if you hired mark loretta i'm using an example the players would have known him. He would have been around. He was working as a front office exec. He was a guy who had a very solid playing career. Someone that you would respect. They have not respected the last two managers. And in part, in my opinion, it's because they don't trust the front office. They know that the front office is just placing a babysitter in the clubhouse. And I just, I was, anytime, it was kind of like any job you have. If you have a middle manager, somebody who's in between you and the real boss, a lot of times you just don't trust that person because you always feel like they're they're just kind of looking over your shoulder to report upstairs. Alex, you just said that he now has experience. That is correct. But where he got his experience at, they will never trust him again because they saw. I, know, I said that. No, no, you just no, you just said he gained experience with the Padres. He did. Right, but he lost respect and he'll never get it back. Is what I said after. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. And I'm saying right, that's right, right. that's why he can't work here no more. Right. That's why. Oh, I yeah, agree. With that's you. why his next job has to be somewhere else because right. he did gain go that experience bench. here. Right. But he yeah. cannot now rebound off that. No, go, he can't go back. He can't in go back room. in. Right. No. Agreed. We're all on the same page. This is a shocking he, development. He is. He is admitting all the reports that we've yes. read in the last week or yes. two. Yes. He's admitting yes. that yes, I did not yes. take control. Right. The guys were self managing. Yep. Or Schumacher was doing it, you know, or the player development coach was butting in between, not me, because I'm leading the league in ejections. You know, I'm standing up for my guys because I'm leading the league in ejections. Mm. That's not valuable to anybody. I know. And and, and look again, it's, standing up to them is two different things. Yes, that's that's a very good point. Very good point. Standing up to them versus standing up for them are two very good line, Browner. A wise man once said that. A smart man. That's right. That's right. A great man. All of them at one table. That. Yeah. Hey, listen, um, later on in today's show, for the first time, you're going to meet Dr. Samir Damani from I Thrive MD. And I want to say to all the guys out there, um, this is about your health. It's about my health. It's about all of our health. It's about our longevity. So when you say to me, well, why are you bringing on the doctor from I Thrive MD? Because they're an advertiser on the show. Yeah, they are. But I'm telling you right now, he's working with NFL players. He's working with professional mixed martial artists. Uh, and he's working with regular guys just like you and me to help keep us healthy and to give us a long, hopefully healthy life. As we get a bit older, our testosterone levels drop. And when that happens, it's not just low sex drive or depression or muscle loss. It's a lot of other physical ailments that come along as a result of having low testosterone. Dr. Samani will stop by today. He'll talk to us for the first time about the benefits of testosterone. 
I know that I'm taking these NAD injections, which is all about maximizing energy and metabolism. He'll talk to us about that. And he'll talk to us about pro athletes that are, that, that are on his website and willing to let him use their name uh, in association with this sort of treatment. So Dr. Samir Damani will be with us a little bit later on from iThrive MD, and we'll give you a lot more information coming up. All right, stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. I want to go from baseball. I'd like to jump into a little football coming up next. Great friends on a Tuesday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew along with Grande and the Brown Man broadcasting on the radio airwaves of the Mightier 1090. Our home base is our YouTube channel, Kaplan and crew on YouTube. And you'll catch us with us tonight on television, Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara. If you are in Palos Verdes or Orange County, it's Channel 118, all part of the Cox your view network. And as always, you can catch us on any of the audio podcast platforms. We were talking a bunch of baseball in the last segment and the Padres and Jace Tingler and whether or not he should be fired or if he sounds like a guy who's going to be fired. He certainly does not in an interview he gave earlier today. Um, and I said, I wanted to talk a little football coming up, which I do, but before we do, Hey guys, um, do you guys know the name Christian Hogan? Does that name sound familiar to you guys? Is that Hulk's evil? Well, let me tell you something, brother. No, I don't. I don't know for sure if it is or it isn't. Um, You know, every time I hear the last name Hogan, I'm like, okay, he's they're related to the Hulk. I know. I feel the same way. Hey, by the way, speaking of of Hulk Hogan, and we're not really speaking of Hulk Hogan, but speaking of wrestling, did you guys know that? Did you guys (laughs) know that last week? I didn't know that somebody told me this, and I had to go look it up. And I honestly, I was like, I had to turn away. I was like, I had to turn away. No, not about Hulk Hogan. Did you guys know that Ric Flair was was kind of caught up last week in a whole cancel culture sort of controversy? Did you guys know this? No. I what? love your reactions. No. I love both of your reactions because that was exactly my reaction. Somebody told me they're like, "Well, yeah, Ric Flair got canceled." I'm like, "Canceled by who?" They're like, "You know, cancel culture." Not by me. Yeah. Canceled from from what? Well, right. <laughs> but, but we need to do some. We need to do some digging on this, and I'll tell you that in tomorrow's show, we should spend a segment on Ric Flair being canceled from what and for what, because I saw Ric Flair's tweets where he kind of came back and was fighting against this cancel culture that was coming after him. I think, you know what? I'm not even gonna tell you what I think because I'm not even sure that I know. I I mean, I literally read it for a second. I was like, no, not Ric Flair. Ric Flair can't be part of the cancel culture. No, I won't have it. I can't have that in my life. I don't want to know that he's been canceled. I want to continue to love Ric Flair. So I turned away from it. So I think tomorrow we should definitely take a minute to try and figure out what happened to Ric Flair. Are you guys both like looking at this right now on Google? Yes. <laughs> you guys are. <laughs> yes. I need to know. I can't wait. From 2006. <laughs> wait, what, what is it? You said you're going to cancel him over something that happened in 2006? Yeah. What are you reading? Know. I'll look into it after the show. I'll look into it. Yeah, I'm just dying to know what you're reading though, right now. Uh, there's Rick Flair apologizes for Chris Canyon's comments following for Chris Canyon comments following Dark Side of the Ring. Rick Flair has apologized for what he said to Chris Canyon on the Howard Stern show in 2006. I don't know who Chris Canyon is. Is this what he got canceled for? I yeah. I, I what, what are you reading, Browner? What are you saying? It's time to move on from Rick Flair. Yeah. From Deadspin by uh, Sam Fields, Dark Side of the Ring reveals sex assault horror story. What is Dark Side of the Ring? Is that something that, um, I mean, I do Podcast, remember. It's probably. No, I don't know. There was a 30 for 30 that Ric Flair was featured in, but I don't know what the Dark Side of the Ring is. Is it a movie? Is it a documentary? Is it a podcast? Probably some documentary. And who's Chris Canyon? A wrestler from back in the day who claims he was fired from the WWE because he was gay. And oh, it's, a, it's on Vice TV, so they probably do stories about people who have been kicked out of wrestling or what happens outside of the ring of wrestling. Mm, I don't know what Vice TV is either. Yeah. So, all right, tomorrow we'll we'll dig a little deeper into this. But okay, here's what happened. Here's what happened. I mentioned to you guys, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the ADD mind. Okay, excuse me, everybody. Uh, yeah, truth no. at yeah. the intersection of fantasy and reality. In the veiled world of professional wrestling, we should oh, get really? I don't want to talk about that. You got to be sounds like you, like wide up right up your alley, Scott. Let me tell you something right now. If you're a pro wrestling Brother. fan, I can't even believe that you would have the audacity to even consider canceling Ric Flair. Okay, I mean, come on. This is like one of the guys who actually built the business. You know, so 
I, I got to learn more about the story. Um, but I, like I said, I turned away from it last week. Let me just, let me get back to why I brought this up. So I got a, a, a direct message yesterday on Facebook, direct messenger from Neil Umshed, J Neil Umshed Jr. I cannot say Neil's last name. U-M-S-C-H-E-I-D. Umshed. Umshed. Neil from the Kaplan and Crew YouTube chat. Neil is one of the all-time great friends. He sends me this message yesterday, and here's what he tells me. He said, hey, can you promote this for a great friend? And I'm like, what, what are we talking about? He said, Christian Hogan, who is another one of the guys who you see every day on the YouTube Shout chat. Shout out, Christian. Right, is bad news. He, he gets his 34-year-old um, stepdaughter. So I don't know how old Christian is, but his 34-year-old stepdaughter died in a single car crash last week, a week ago today. And she has a 13-year-old and a 16-year-old. Wow. And Christian Hogan is really in our chat like every day. He's a part of the Kaplan and Crew YouTube familia. Okay. Um, so of course I asked some questions like, well, you know, like what happened? And because it's terrible, tragic news. And according to Neil, Christian hasn't said exactly what happened. He said, but if you could put this out there for the great friends to donate, I'm sure he would appreciate it. So he sent me a GoFundMe link that they've set up for um, the children of the daughter, the stepdaughter. And apparently the first thing that they're trying to do is to help financially with funeral related arrangements. So here it is. Um, this is from Samantha. This is the sister of Erica, who is one of the people. Uh, I don't know who's who. You'll have to excuse me, everybody. Um, I got this in a direct message, but I'll do anything to help the great friends. Um, and sister died in a car crash. And they are raising money as best they can to help the family with funeral arrangements. And what they say here is any money that's left over from the funeral will immediately go to the children. So this was just created a few days ago. They're trying to raise somewhere in the neighborhood of about $11,000. I'm estimating here, but they're at about the $5,000 range. Look, here's the thing. If you're... Uh, go ahead, Alex. If you are in the YouTube, if you're yeah. watching the show on YouTube, I will put the link okay. in the description. Cool. Thank you for that. Look, so for those of you it. that are just catching up to us on radio, and I, I doubt that there's you know all that many new people coming to radio, but for those of you that are checking us out on television and you don't know the history of the show, what I'll just tell you is this. Um, the radio show, even though it was in a different iteration back then, went on the airwaves when there was just radio back in 2001. It's 20 years. Okay, We've created real relationships with many of our listeners. And when somebody in our audience, in our family, is going through hard times, not necessarily meant to be a wrestling reference off the Hogan Flair conversation, but when somebody in our audience is going through hard times, um, we all want to step up and give a hand. You know, and Christian Hogan is there every day in the YouTube chat. And so, Alex, like I said, uh, if you could just put that up on the screen one more time, because there's a lot of people on television on Channel 4 and Cox's Your View Network they're going to hear about this and go, that's terribly sad and so tragic. And whether you can donate $10, $50, $100, or you can just send positive vibes and, and love, uh, feel free. But uh, Christian Hogan, we're thinking about you. And hey, Neil, that's uh, you're a mensch, my brother. You really are for, for sending me that information and for helping me give everybody this info to hopefully help Christian. So good job out of you, Neil. Appreciate you, pal. All right, let's jump right back into it, guys. Last night was Monday night football, and I don't know about you guys, but I never turned on the ESPN telecast, the Lewis Riddick, Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, traditional Monday night football telecast. I have to admit it. You know, my boy Lewis Riddick's going to hear this and not be real happy with me, but I don't know what it is. I, I find that me watching the game with Peyton and Eli – and then their series of guests. I liked Matthew Stafford yesterday evening. I liked LeBron James in the afternoon. I liked, is it Chris Long? I know there's two Long brothers. Chris Long, uh, you know, yes. which I thought was fascinating, by the way. You got Peyton and Eli, who are pro football Hall of Fame brothers, whose father is kind of, you know, NFL royalty. Not that Archie Manning was the greatest quarterback of all time, but look what he, look what he brought to the NFL. And will continue to bring to the NFL. And for Chris Long and his brother, I don't know the brother's name, 
I don't remember it offhand, but their father's Howie Long. So, you know, here you have these two sets of brothers whose fathers are what I call NFL royalty. And in Howie Long's case, a pro football hall of famer. So I, I just, I just find that I feel like I'm watching the game. Me, Peyton and Eli are all watching the same game and a couple of their buddies stop by and I'm on the other end of the phone and LeBron's hanging out. And I, I just, I find it to be very entertaining. I can watch a very standard run of the mill NFL broadcast all day Sunday. I can see Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. I can see Jim Nance and Tony Romo. I can get the run of the mill standard NFL broadcast on Sunday, but on Monday night, I like hanging with the Manning brothers. What are you guys watching? Uh, I, I enjoy it. I thought Nick Saban was probably the worst interview they've had so far, but that's because he has poor lighting and his internet. I mean, the guy's got a lot of money. doesn't have good internet. If I'm, if I work at ESPN on Monday night football, I am really upset with the people who created this because this is a better product. This is, <laughs> this is what people would prefer to to be a part of on a Monday Night Football telecast. And I think if this is done correctly going forward, this is the way games will be presented. This is a this is a far better way to watch football. It's not it's not scripted I mean, to a certain extent. It's not cookie cut. It's kind of goes how it goes. You just need the right two people to pull it off. And I I love it. I I watch that way more than and I love Lewis Riddick. I'm not a Greasy fan, and I think all you need is one person in that booth to turn the channel. And Greasy did it for, for me, and so I'm on to the Manning brothers. I think that it is a fantastic way to watch football when you're a by yourself, and b you don't care about the game. There is zero chance I'm watching that when the Vikings are on Monday Night Football. If I'm invested in the game, why though? I need the because I, I don't want to listen to breakdowns. I want to watch the game. I want I'm I'm a I'm an educated enough fan where I don't need it broken down for me. And I but I do love how much how the Manning brothers treat us like we're educated fans, where they're not explaining like the basic ABCs. But if I like, if I care about the game, I don't want to listen intently to what the Manning brothers are saying. I want to watch the action of the game. But I love it. And like so, yesterday was their first blowout, and I, they did fine. Because one of the most difficult things we all know is when the game sucks, it turns into a talk show between the mm -hmm. two guys. Mm -hmm. So I thought they did a fine job. Um, and I love that already three weeks in, we had our first apology. Okay, hold on. We'll get to that in a second. But two things come to mind. First of all, it seems to me like you've already made a decision that you're on to football season, that baseball season is over, that the Padres are done, and that it doesn't look like you're really into the Dodgers or the Giants or the Cardinals or or – it just doesn't look to me like you care about the baseball postseason. You've already given up on baseball and you've gone to football. Am I wrong, Grande? That is correct. Oh, I'm right. Yeah. Okay, and you know how the evidence, Browner. Do you do you notice something different about Grande's studio today? Oh yeah, he put that ugly sweater up. Don't I want to see that shirt? Get that out of here. Yeah, whatever uh, that is. <laughs> Grande had his Padres uh, swag chain. Black chain t-shirt yeah for months he had his swag chain t-shirt draped over his callaway golf clubs that seem to be collecting a lot of dust or at least are just performing beautifully as a prop i i wipe them off all the time well shout out to my man jason <laughs> finley and everybody up at callaway golf sending you guys a whole bunch of love i got a lot of people who this past weekend must have been listening to the I need some wedges you need jason. wedges I, you have no idea i have two broken golf yeah, clubs in my in my desperate. bag i got to go up to Callaway. Man, i need a fitted. whole golf set bro i need a whole i need all the sticks why you ain't playing the only the only i got no sticks i can't play mm. The only stick I got from wedge wedge form is a is a pitching wedge. No, right now, I need so a sixty degree. I'm with I need a, yeah. a fifty six degree. I need a Bro, new fifty two degree. Bag. I need I need, I need an degrees. A wedge. I need a pitching. I, need I mean, I, you know, I, I think I need Jason associates. Mm. Can Jason hook it up with a couple wedges? He always Jason Jason, Jason like candy at Halloween. Jason runs the wedge. He wedges balls. You name it. He he runs it. But the thing is, is that um, I got a lot of people who sent me messages over the weekend. People must have been listening to the Ryder Cup on Sirius Satellite Radio on the PGA Tour channel. And, you know, I've been doing all these, you know, these commercials for Callaway. Like, hey, want to know how this guy became a champion of this tournament? It's the Callaway driver, blah, blah, blah. And people are hearing those spots on Sirius Satellite Radio. And people hit me up like, did I just hear your voice on a Callaway golf commercial? I'm like, you did? 
You did? I read that. I read that script. Why can't you then get me a bag of clubs, man? Give me a bag of them sticks, bro. <laughs> okay, I will. Then you the one I'm talking to. Okay, I will. I'm happy to do it. Mm-hmm. As the voice mm-hmm. of Callaway Golf, I'm happy to do it. Um, That's right. So I noticed that Alex has given up on baseball because he's got his Vikings shirt or blanket or something yeah, draped shirt. over his golf clubs now. That's not exactly what okay. happened. But well, what okay, happened? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had the swag chain shirt there forever. What happened? Right. Uh, the swag chain shirt my fiance wanted to wear to the game on Friday, mm-hmm. and she spilled some alcohol on it, so it got dirty. And I noticed that there was no shirt on there yesterday mm-hmm. during the show. And I was like, well, that one's dirty, but this one's not. Mm-hmm. So let's just put this one on. My swag yeah. chain t-shirt has turned into a 14-year-old little girl's nightgown. Pajamas. There you go. Yeah. Now, I also <laughs> noticed, and I'm going to get back to football here and get back to the Mannings in one second. I also noticed behind you over your right shoulder and underneath your TV, mm-hmm. check me on this, but is that the new sided hat that you have back there that you're displaying? Yes. I can't see it. Over there. Because it's facing the opposite direction. Right. I, t- I as I my I walked out of the room and I tipped it with my hip. I'll straighten it out. Well, can you grab it for a second? Those are <laughs> how do you guys like the new sided hats, the new sided t-shirts? We got to start giving them away to great friends. It doesn't fit under my hair. I uh I have a giant dome, so it doesn't fit on my head. Really? <laughs> you got the small mediums. I when it comes to the one size fits all. I, I never I never knew that there was a difference in size. I and mean, that's a fat Tony production right there. Those sided hats look sweet. So we, yeah, those are looking good. Yeah, not, right I got on. too much hair. I, I got two hats. See? Yeah. Go nice. Back. All right. Hey, listen, I want to get back to the Manning brothers and I will in just one second. Um, but I do want to say, Hey, Corky's pest control. 1-800-901-1102 is the phone number. But as Corky's television commercials tell you all the time now, it's super easy. Just Google one word. That one word is Corky's. You don't have to Google pest control. You don't have to Google San Diego pest control, Southern California pest control. You don't have to Google termites or ants or anything else. Just Google one word. That one word is Corky's. And when you get to Corky's website, you're going to find out there is so much information there because you don't know about bugs. I don't know anything about bugs, but Corky knows everything about bugs. And you say, well, how do, how do you know he knows everything? Corky's the guy that wrote the textbook that every pest control technician on the planet now reads, studies, is tested on, etc. Corky, miser, the person, the human being, he actually wrote the textbook. So if you're going to trust the guy, trust the guy who wrote the textbook that every other pest control company uses, you got ant problems, spiders, rodents, termites. Nobody beats Corky's prices. Nobody beats his four-year guarantee when it comes to termites. Nobody beats his service and his professional people that come to your home. He's the best. That's why he's been at it for over 40 years in Southern California. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. Nicely done. Very nicely done. All right, back to the to the Manning brothers and their Monday night football broadcast. This is really not about the Cowboys and a big win last night over Philadelphia. It is more about the Mannings. Alex, show us some highlights of the Manning brothers last night. Yeah. Let's see what you pulled out for us. Let's start off with, let's just, no, this is TV. I don't know if I can show that. <laughs> oh, right. Let's start off with the uh, hips don't lie. Oh, a lot of dancing. Ooh. Wow. I, I don't know what that is. I, I, I just, that's new to me. I'm too old school. That's the Tom, that's the Tom House stuff. Pay, you know, here, I'll show you, Pete. It's it's about it's about creating torque. Pretty good, right? It's like it's about creating. You know, close the left hip, open up that right hip. Uh, close the left shoulder, open up the hip. Boom, boom, boom. These hips don't lie. I'm like Shakira. The hips don't lie, Pete. That's why I could throw it further than you. My hips are loose. <laughs> so Peyton Manning and Eli Manning are watching Dak Prescott's pregame warm-up where he does these like dance gyration moves. And Eli Manning looks pretty good doing it. And I think it's pretty funny the way he's always ribbing Peyton. Yeah. You know, like, hey, that's why I can throw the ball further than you. Because my hips open. Yours don't. He had a he had a he had Yeah, a when it first started on one end. Yeah. On one on, just the first one, he gave him crap for that. He gives him crap about his head all the time. Uh, his dad was on with the couch with him. They st- they both started ripping uh, Peyton. It's great. Um, yeah, I love it. One thing that we could all agree, I think the three of us agree on this, uh, Mike McCarthy is terrible with time management. Oh, mm-hmm. it was beautiful. And it was, dude, Peyton Manning just ripped him. This is a short clip, but there was a longer clip of them ripping Mike McCarthy and his play calling, but this is right before. Or make Dallas, Dallas want to call time out. out. Dallas needs to call time out. I don't think, they probably don't know if Philly's going to go for it or not, right? You get matter. nervous there. Call you, time out, Mike. Call time out. <laughs> Call time the, out, Mike. 
do you guys agree that their their assessment of the game is unfiltered? They're not like they're not like ripping guys, but they're down to criticize them without worrying about repercussion. What they're doing I think that gives me that, that to me that attracts me. A they're lot. Hall of Fame quarterbacks who sound like fans. That's what's what, so cool about it. What they're doing in the beauty in it is they're just simply calling what they see. Mm -hmm. So they they're giving you the perspective of if I was at home watching this, this is what I would be doing. Yeah. Mike, call a timeout. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. You should call a timeout because most people who are watching the game feel that way. Are screaming, call a timeout, call a timeout. And then you hear these guys doing it, and it just validates it. So that I think that's yeah. why. And you will never get that broadcast on the Monday Night Football actual broadcast. They're never going to scream, Mike, call a timeout. So that like this is why I would prefer to watch this. Yeah. I mean, this is where on the regular broadcast, Lewis Riddick could say something like, you know, if I were Mike McCarthy – I'd, I'd be, be calling, calling a timeout, time <laughs> right, you know? Mm -hmm. But instead, you got Peyton Manning going, call a timeout. What are you doing, man? Come on. Call right. a timeout, Mike. I love <sighs> it. I think it's fun. I, I really do. I, I, I have stopped on Monday Night Football. I have stopped watching the standard Monday Night Football ESPN telecast, and I'm now part of the growing audience on ESPN2 that is watching the Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, unfiltered Hall of Fame quarterbacks become fanboys. Uh, I love it. Peyton and Eli, I'm absolutely loving what you guys are doing. All right, stick around. John Clayton, the professor, our NFL insider, stopping by. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. That's coming up next. All right, great friends. It is a Tuesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. We are coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Seven Mile Casino, just minutes from downtown San Diego. And now, Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza is now Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, and it's inside Seven Mile Casino. It's open 24-7. Great brunch on Saturday and Sunday mornings from 8 a.m. to 9 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So come on down, especially on Saturdays and Sundays. You got the brunch. You got college football games. You got NFL games. You got blackjack poker, the, be the beautiful view of the Bay of Chula Vista at Seven Mile Casino. And now the professor, John Clayton, is back for our NFL Insider Report. Professor, good afternoon. Welcome back. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Looking forward to talking to Browner because, boy, sounds like uh, was I right about the Justin Fields and offensive line situation with the Bears? <laughs> oh, John, you have no idea. I came well, on I'm the in the building. Yesterday. Don't do that. No, oh, no, no, no. Hold on. <laughs> I, I came up on just in time. I came on the air yesterday, John Clayton, and I said to John Browner, I said, I took the Browns to win. I yeah. took them to cover the nine, nine and a half points. And, and I said, did John Clayton not tell you specifically that the offensive line for your Chicago Bears is so bad that you're going to wind up getting Justin Fields hurt? And they sacked him for as mobile as he's is supposed to be. They sacked him nine times. So I will say this, John Clayton, first, first to you, sir. What do you have mm -hmm. to say? Uh, the Bears. I mean, but the, <laughs> I mean, uh, again, it's so predictable. And you know, I mean, he didn't get it. Browner didn't get it. Is the fact that, uh, you know, he holds on to the ball, you know, because he tries to make plays. But that line is so bad that uh, he puts himself in a position. And right now you can see he's not ready to handle this. It's clear he's not ready to handle it. I mean, what he had a uh, a point set. He had a seven uh, quarter QBR rating. I mean, he completed like forty percent of his passes. I mean, it was brutal. Browner, your thoughts? <laughs> That's, I'm so I'm I'm so glad, John. I'm so glad you started off with this level of of of, of uh, acknowledgement of what happened to the Chicago Bears. Because I'll tell you this. If you watch that game, and I know you you probably seen uh, yeah. enough of it to make a proper judgment, did Matt Nagy give Justin Fields the same game plan that he would have given Andy Dalton? No. So you so you think the game plan that Justin Fields had would have, I don't know, if if the line would have blocked, would he have done better? Yeah, but if the line, I mean, but the line didn't block, <clears throat> the so, line can't block. 
Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Didn't so, and cannot. <laughs> so why, if you're the head coach, because around the league, yes, Zach Wilson is struggling, but the offensive coordinator and whoever's calling plays for them is trying to help him by moving the pocket, by relying on the run game. Same thing in Jacksonville, same thing in New England, same thing in San Francisco. But the only place where that's not happening is Chicago. No screen passes. You're not chipping Miles Garrett. You're not giving any assistance. They got six tight ends on their roster. They're not going two tight end sets. They, they don't have a fullback. There's an entire list of things as to why Justin Fields. Now, again, he didn't play great. That's not, that's not up for he, debate. He did. Come on. He <laughs> didn't play great. Give me a break. That, I'm, not, I'm not arguing against that. What I'm saying is if any other head coach – had mm -hmm. a rookie that you traded up for and you gave him so little help, they would have looked like that as well. There's no way Andy Dawn would have done any better than Justin Fields on that particular day with that game plan. But what happened to Andy Dalton? He ends up playing, going on a scramble, and he gets hurt. I mean, the line is so bad. And my position is Justin Fields down the line is going to be good. Not now. Not at the beginning of the season. And so he's out there in week three with his first start and he puts on perhaps one of the worst performances we've seen in years. And, I agree. Uh, and again, what's, uh, so who starts this week? Nick Foles? No, oh. no, 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 no. Justin Fields is a starter period. Well, well, it's not what period. Matt Nagy oh. said. Matt, no, listen, know. Matt Nagy's a liar. Okay. For him to say, <laughs> For Matt Nagy to come out and say Justin Fields is hurt, he hurt his hand, is getting x-rays, and for Justin Fields to come out and say, yeah, I'm fine, there's nothing wrong with my hand, the x-ray were simply precaution, I'm ready to go. Like, what, like he, he can't even communicate and get on the same page with his quarterback about what happened to his hand right after the game. So I don't, I don't know what they're doing in that building when it comes to who's, do, who's calling play. Well, I know Matt Nagy's calling plays, but how they're prepping for the game every week. But if you come out with another effort like they did on Sunday against the Lions who play hard, you will lose. And then you will be fired. And Nick will be just served. Hmm. Yeah, so people, can talk about, people can talk about the offensive line all they how want. Much, how, how, many mis uh, how much uh, are you going to uh, apologize for uh, Justin Fields? I mean, was he not bad? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not saying he wasn't. I'm not saying he wasn't bad. But, the, but again, in your first start, the coach should set you up properly, at least in the first series, with some quick throws, some screen passes, something to get you comfortable, something to get you going in the right direction. They never did that. You hear this analysis, John Clayton? Like picking apart yeah. everything that the coach should have been doing when in reality you're playing against a good defensive line with mm -hmm. a bad old line with a rookie quarterback, and we can talk all day long about what he was at Ohio State. We can talk about all day long about what kind of athlete he might be, but you got to be able to read. You got to be able to get rid of the ball, and and you know we can sit here and blame the coaching and the play calling. And you ask the question, Browner, could Andy Dalton have done any better? My my answer is I would certainly expect a veteran quarterback to have done better than a guy getting his first start given the circumstances. Who I mean, who, uh, wouldn't they, they play the Rams? One game, right. Who, Yes. Well, say that yes. one more time, John Clayton. Say it again. I'm sorry. They, the, the, the Bears did one game, win one game, right? Yes. Who was the quarterback? Andy uh, Dalton? Justin Fields played more snaps than Andy Dalton. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, see, I see a little trick you just tried to throw in there, John. A little trick you tried to throw in there. Andy Dalton wasn't better against the Rams. Like, the Rams right now are the number one team in football. All right. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. Let's keep going here. Yeah. John, what do you think? I mean, I really believed. Uh, that the Rams' victory over Tampa Bay, not just mm -hmm. the fact that they won the game. Let's face it, they beat Tampa Bay up. Um, right. They, they had a 31-17 lead, and it was the game was over going into the fourth quarter. There were two plays in particular in that game. I know you were busy with the Seahawks, so maybe you didn't see every play. Two plays in particular. On a third and 10, Matthew Stafford completes a 20-yard pass to Robert Woods that kept the drive going, and they eventually scored a touchdown. And then the second biggest play, at least in my opinion, was LA's defense got Tom Brady off the field when the mm -hmm. score was only 21-14. to 14. Um, actually check that the score was 28 to 14 at the time, but they were able to get them off the field. 
on a third and 15, the crowd noise was so loud that it, it resulted in a false start penalty, turned it to third and 20. And Tom Brady couldn't pick up the 20 yards and the punt was shanked, which set the Rams up on the 37 yard line of the Buccaneers going in. So, I mean, there were those, the, the Stafford third and 10 play, and then the Rams defense getting off the field. The game was over after the third quarter. What right, do you right. The Rams after three weeks. Um, they look, they look great. I mean, right now they, uh, they've taken over as the number one team because the number one team was Tampa Bay. Now again, this is Tampa Bay on the road with a defense that's not been able to put pressure on the quarterback, surprisingly, and is giving up way too many yards and points and all those different things. But again, you know, the Rams, even though they've dropped dramatically as far as the yards allowed, they're playing great. And, you know, Matthew Stafford has been a up, big upgrade. I mean, his ability to hit with Cooper Cup has been remarkable. I mean, they look fantastic right now. And so, uh, you know, they look like a Super Bowl team. And because of that, it's going to be dangerous in the NFC West to watch how they continue to grow. We'll, and Seattle looking so bad right now. So uh, I like what I see from the Rams. Yeah, and and John, before Alex jumps in here, I just want you to pick that up. So the Rams look great. They're mm-hmm. going to play against Arizona this week. So two unbeaten teams inside the division are going to face off. San Francisco lost at home to Green Bay, and we saw what Aaron Rodgers did with 37 seconds and no times out, no timeouts. Um, but John, your Seattle Seahawks find themselves in a hole at one and two through the first three weeks. If you can um, give everybody in Southern California listening a little idea of what what has gone wrong for the Seahawks through the first three weeks? Pretty much everything because, you know, the defense looks bad. They look bad at cornerback. You know, they're not getting pressure on uh, the quarterback with their defensive line. You know, the linebacking core is not syncing up with the defensive backs as far as coverage in the middle of the field on some pass plays. You look on offense, communication problems with the offensive line. They're not running the ball consistently. I mean, you, you, you name just about everything. I mean, this game against the Vikings, they pray, played maybe the worst that they've played since, uh, you know, Tom, I mean, since, you know, Pete Carroll took over the team, you know, back at the beginning of the decade in 2010. So it's like, they look terrible. Wow. John Clayton is here. Our longtime NFL insider, the professor, John Clayton is back to discuss all things NFL. Wow. How about that Grande as bad as they've ever been in the Pete Carroll era and losing to your Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, it's kind of stunning to watch Seahawks football when their defense is so bad. You know, they were, they were built, mm-hmm. Pete Carroll built that team on defense, Legion of Boom, blah, blah, blah. They had absolutely no pass rush against Kirk Cousins. And I told you guys yesterday, if you give Kirk Cousins that much time, he will actually pick you apart. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, but, John, there's another team that's one and two that's also surprising, and that's the Chiefs. Uh, yeah. Unlike the Seahawks, I don't think they're bad. I think they're beating themselves. What do you think about the Chiefs so far? Well, same thing. I mean, uh, you know, Seattle, Seattle's beating themselves. Chiefs are beating themselves, too. And look what's happened. I mean, you got what uh, – does Patrick Mahomes have, I think, five interceptions? That's rare. <clears throat> you can see he's now having fourth-quarter interceptions, which he's never had before. And then Clyde Edward Hilaire twice in the last two weeks in critical minutes uh, at the end of the game has had fumbles. Now, he didn't fumble at all last year in his rookie season. Now he's got two, and it's cost him two games. John, um, at the end of the game, when the Chiefs were trying to, uh, in desperation, find a way to get themselves, you know, this this win at home, mm-hmm. Mahomes throws up this Hail Mary, right? And you can see that the San Diego defensive backs interfere. Oops. San Diego. The, the San Sorry. Diego defensive backs interfere. Well, when do they get a team? Well, they. San Diego. You, they can move them up the road, but they're not going to get me to call them. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah, got it. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the San Diego defensive backs interfered with the Kansas City receivers. And right. in another time in the game, they may have thrown a penalty flag. I don't know why the referees think that the last few seconds of a game are any different than the first few seconds of a mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And now, and now there's been some, some refs talking about how that should have been a pass interference penalty against the Chargers. What did you think? I thought it should have been an interference, but again, it's like uh, the, the officiating this year has been off. I mean, I think that uh, as much as I'm, I'm a big believer that the NFL has the best officiating, it's been very, very inconsistent. And I think so much of it is they ask so much of these officials. 
I mean, now they have to watch the taunting rule. You have to watch this. You have to watch the extra blocking, all those different things. And then, of course, you've got the interference, which, of course, has been off and on all year. But it's a problem. But, uh, you know, in the end, it's like uh, you want less penalties, not more penalties. But that probably should have been a penalty. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We're talking to John Clayton this afternoon. Hey, John, um, as we keep moving around here, I'm curious to hear what you think about the Raiders, because while Mm -hmm. the Rams play the Cardinals, two unbeaten teams this upcoming Sunday, Monday night, the Raiders will come to their hometown, L.A., and it'll be a complete blackout on Monday night when they take on San Diego and SoFi Stadium. So I kind of expected the Raiders to be able to handle the Dolphins the way they started the season and who they beat. But I got to give Miami credit to go cross country with a backup quarterback, uh, get a big lead. And then, I mean, obviously they lost it. So I'll give the Raiders a ton of credit mm-hmm. for being resilient. But what do you what do you make of the Raiders through three weeks in a three and zero record? Well, they're playing well. I mean, that's the thing. It's like uh, three years where they didn't make the playoffs with John Gruden. And now you've got uh, Derek Carr with some of the best numbers in the league. You've got uh, four pass catchers making 20 plus catches. That's a rarity. You've got uh, you know Max Crosby being one of the best defensive players in the league. The defense looks better. They're playing good football, and they're playing good football at critical times in the game. Give them credit. They're playing good. Yeah, yeah. We're talking to John Clayton this afternoon. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, John, how about the defending champs? I know they're 2-1, and one, uh, but if mm-hmm. you watched week two, it was not pretty. Their defense is, is, is hurt and banged up. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you concerned about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers prospects this season, or is it just, hey, our defense is banged up right now? I'd be concerned if they weren't in the NFC uh, South. I mean, because right now, uh, Carolina looks like it might be a surprise team, but can they hold up? You know, because now they had an easy schedule to get off to the 3-0 and start. You know, can they hold up? And, you know, New Orleans is going to be up and down all year. You know, we know Atlanta is going to be terrible. So, uh, no, I still think Tampa Bay can do it, but they've got to get better on defense. Do you think Pittsburgh has a Ben Roethlisberger problem? Because they 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 didn't go the pack around and draft someone like a Jordan Love to have someone mm-hmm. in case Ben Roethlisberger kind of goes off the rails. Last year he did it toward the end of the season. He's already doing it now. What do you see anything Pittsburgh can do to kind of right this ship with him? Well, they still they still have a number one pick in uh, Dwayne Haskins that they, they can see if they can develop and do some things because remember he was in the middle of the first round couple of years ago so they do have one option there mason rudolph is not one but i think what you're looking at this is clearly ben's last year because with that offensive line as bad as it is and you know how bad offensive lines can be of course is that do, they Brown. have five new starters on the offensive line in pittsburgh you know they are i think in trouble and defensively they've got injuries you know and so uh I'm, you, right now they look like a team that's not a playoff team Hey, John, before you go, I'm curious to hear what you think about this. Yeah. What was what was the most interesting play of the weekend? And I'll give you two. Maybe you want to add to it. But mm-hmm. was it the field goal return by Jacksonville from a kid who played his college football here at the University of San Diego, who's gone on to have a really nice NFL career? This kid, Ryan Agnew, who, by the way, when he played at USD, there was no fanfare. There was nobody saying, hey, there's mm-hmm. this really good player at USD. He's going to be an NFL player. Kind of reminds me of um, – of, of how at San Diego state there, there oftentimes there are players that are under the radar and you just never hear about them. And then they go on and have nice careers. Agnew's had a good career. So he had this uh, a return of a field goal, 109 yards. Last time we saw that around here, uh, that was Antonio Cromartie many years ago. And then the other play that I found to be one of the most fascinating, and I, I don't think you'll be surprised by this, but Justin Tucker's 66 yard field goal that dramatically hits the crossbar and bounces in. Of those two plays, what what did you make of them this past weekend? Oh, I mean, again, uh, the big thing with Jamal, though, as great as the play was, I mean, Jacksonville still lost. I mean, Baltimore was able to win thanks to Justin Tucker and that 66-yard field goal, which is obviously, I mean, he's with, he may be the greatest kicker in NFL history. He's right. that good. So, no, I think right. it's not close. I think it's Justin Tucker. As good as the play was with Jamal, I give it to Tucker because they won the game. Is it Jamal Agnew? Did I call him Ryan Agnew? Who's Ryan Agnew? Ryan Agnew know? was the quarterback. Jamal Agnew is the USD running back. Who's the Jamal? Who's Ryan Agnew? Ryan, Ryan Agnew, Agnew was the quarterback of San Diego State for like a year or two. Oh, oh, that's where I'm screwing up the names. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, John. Thank you for correcting me. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's good. <so. laughs> hey, John, can I ask you a fantasy football question? 
I know. Yeah. I know you're super into it. How long Christian McCaffrey not going on the IR? How long is he out for? Probably two weeks or so. Because if if he was going to go on for three weeks, then he would go on IR. So uh, probably two weeks. All right, there you go. Uh, John Clayton, it is great to be with you always. Uh, Have a wonderful remainder of your Tuesday, and we will see you back here next week. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. The Professor John Clayton stopping by and uh, having his fun at your expense, Browner. Nope, I crushed him. No, you didn't. Crushed him. No, you really didn't. And I and I love how if we don't stop you from from having this conversation, it, it'll turn into 20 minutes of you and John Clayton talking about how bad the Bears' offensive line is. True. Facts. But I crushed him on that. I got him that time. What, He's what outdone you crush me him? a couple times. What, what did you crush him? I crushed him on the fact that uh, Matt Nagy didn't help. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I will bet U.S. that Matt Nagy get fired. When is he going to get fired? What the bet U.S. odds on that is. I need to look it up. I don't know what they are, but here's what I want to do. I want to do. I do want to mention BetUS. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, BetUS.com is the website, and I'll give you a phone number. It's 1-800-79-BETUS, 1-800-79-BETUS. If you are into wagering on football games, this is the place to do it. Why? Because BetUS has been America's favorite sports book for the better part of the last 25 years. Okay, what does that mean to me? It means that you have a sports book with integrity, and with longevity, and that means you know you're going to get paid. As a matter of fact, when Alex puts up on the screen the BetUS.com website, you'll see Basketball Hall of Famer Gary Payton says, you bet your ass you're going to get paid. That's right. You are. BetUS.com, 1-800-79-BETUS. If you like betting on horse racing, MMA, football games, uh, they got it all for you. Plus a 200% crypto bonus, 125% sign-up bonus when you're using straight-up cash. So you got a lot of opportunities here for extra bonuses. The betus.com is the place to go. Mention 1090. That's how you get those bonuses. Of course, mention 1090. And uh, this is where the game begins. You must be 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, use that number 1-800-GAMBLER. 1-800-GAMBLER. Betus.com. 1-800-79-BETUS. They can get you all set up and get you an account and get you all ready to go. Okay. We have a lot more we still want to get to today, but coming up, Dr. Samir Damani is going to stop by for the first time. He got a whole bunch of pro athletes that are patients at iThrive MD. What are those pro athletes getting and what can we regular guys get? We'll find out. Dr. Damani stopping by next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. Great friends on a Tuesday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew along with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. For those of you that are listening on the radio, on the airwaves of the Mightier 1090 throughout Southern California, happy to have all of you guys along listening on radio. You're about to meet a guest for the first time and you'll see him and hear him many more times beyond today. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, I want all you guys on YouTube to pay very, very close attention to what Dr. Damani is about to tell us here today and for those of you that catch the show on tv you catch the show on channel 4 san diego channel 4 santa barbara channel 118 in palos verdes and in orange county i want all of you guys who are watching this evening to really perk up and listen carefully to what dr damani is about to tell us because i always tell you guys i thrive md is about longevity and health and wellness and i plan on being here for a really long time and i want to be healthy throughout that time so Dr. Damani and I Thrive MD helping me with that, and they can help you as well. Because Browner, let me tell you something. And I told this to Dr. Damani last week when he and I spoke. I told you last week that I am middle-aged at 50 years old. And you laughed at me, and you said I am not middle-aged. you not. <laughs> what do you mean? you not, man. Listen, middle. you're assuming that middle-aged, that you're going to make it to 100, bro. You're not going to do it. You're well, not going to do it. Well, I would argue challenge accepted, right? Right. (laughs) With the help of Dr. Damani and the help of I thrive MD and getting myself as healthy and as well and sleeping well and all the other things that he can help with. I plan on living for a very long time. Here is Dr. Yeah. Dr. Damani will be Jeff Bezos rich. If you make it to a hundred.
All right. Well, let's see. Here is Dr. Samir Damani. He runs the iThrive MD Clinic, and he's been a great partner and sponsor of the show. And now here we, we get a chance to put the face and the name and the voice and everything together. Dr. Damani, it is great to have you on the show. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Scott. You, uh, you, you give me any chance to make it to 100, Doc. Hey, Listen, man, I think uh, with all the things coming out these days, you know, health span, you know, is, is getting bigger. I mean, it's not even about living that long, right? It's living with vitality and vigor. So, you know, if you can lift to 85 or 90, but doing the same things that you're doing at 85 or 90, that when you were 50 or 40, you know, that that is just as valuable in some ways than living to 100, but being in a wheelchair or a bed, right? So I think, you know, as our as we are evolving as society, we're we're starting to rethink what it means to live long. Yeah. Hey, doctor, let, let's jump right into this. I have been telling people on the radio for many years about what testosterone can do for you. And I told you this story the other day. I had a really close friend of mine. He's driving down the road. He hears me talking about I Thrive MD, and he calls me and says, "Are you really taking testosterone?" I said, I, "I've been taking it for a really long time, but I've come to I Thrive MD now, where I feel like I'm getting a, a higher level of of understanding of what testosterone really does for my body." So, if you could start us off with, why is it that so many guys over forty have low testosterone? And why is it important for them to get their testosterone levels right? No, it's, it's a great question. So, you know, to start above the age of 40, your natural production, and this is known, you know, you have menopause in women and, you know, some people jokingly call it menopause in men, but, you know, as you age, your, your organs, your reproductive organs don't produce as much testosterone. Your testicles don't produce as much testosterone as they used to. And it's well known that above the age of 40, you know, depending on what population you screen, uh, up to one in three men can have it. And when you start looking at those with chronic conditions like hypertension, obesity, diabetes, up to one in two men um, are deficient in testosterone. And what we found lately, and in fact, this was published in the Journal of American College of Cardiology. It's a very, very prestigious cardiac journal. Just a few years ago, there was a state called a state of the art review where before I started looking at this, I, I, I did really deep research into kind of what the data shows, but it started to show where, listen, if you're deficient in testosterone, your risk for mortality and cardiovascular mortality is two to three X, depending on what studies you look at. So there's a significant um, link to death and, and mortality with low testosterone states. And I think people, you know, just like, uh, with women's hormones, uh, you know, physicians have been kind of uh, scared away from using testosterone uh, because of some of the data associated with uh, prostate cancer. And, you know, a lot of that has been debunked or if it hasn't been debunked, it's certainly been, you know, uh, controversial in terms of the, the link to prostate cancer. It's just really hasn't been proven to be the case. And so there's a lot of doctors today that shy away from the use of it. And then the other thing too, is, you know, you have a range of over 800, that's normal. I mean, how do you have a range that's 300 could be normal and 1000 can be normal, right? And so we know that testosterone fluctuates under stress, under fasting states. So long story short, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people should be concerned about uh, checking their testosterone and possibly replacing it. You know, to me, I've always told guys that testosterone, especially when you're over 40 years old, we know that the stats say that one in three guys over 40 years old uh, has low testosterone. And I've told everybody, here are the symptoms, muscle loss, uh, a lack of motivation, a lack of sex drive, erectile dysfunction, brain fog, depression. I mean, I, I've described all of these symptoms, doctor, uh, of, of low testosterone. Do testosterone injections, I mean, do they really, I mean, at least in your experience, what kind of success rate do you have when somebody like myself, I'm, I was shocked. I, most recently I was in iThrive. I, I had my blood work done and yet again, my testosterone was low. Does it, does, does it, in your experience, does it really help all of those different symptoms? Everyone's very unique. Um, some people's primary, um, symptom is they just don't have any get up and go. They, they can't get up. They don't have the energy. Others are erectile dysfunction. Um, others are- That's a whole nother get up and go. Yeah, that, that get, there's two different get up and goes, right? Yeah, so, 
So depression is a big part. We see a lot of depression, a lot of fatigue, a lot of lack of motivation. Um, the two big ones are, you know, uh, erectile dysfunction is obviously one and, and, and low sex drive. That, those are the two big ones, um, you know, but, but they can present. Anyone can present across the board with any of these symptoms. Absolutely. All right. We're talking to Dr. Samir Damani from iThrive MD. Uh, he has been a great partner of ours, uh, but this is the first time he's making an appearance on the show. Hey, Doc, before we talk about a bunch of other stuff, um, regular guys like us, we should be coming in to see you guys. And we can talk a lot about different things that you guys do. Uh, and again, this is not the first and only time you'll be on the show, but talk to us about some pro athletes from different sports that come in and visit and what, what they're doing inside of iThrive MD. Yeah, we have several on our website, you know, uh, Phil Davis, who's a, um, a light heavyweight champion for mixed martial art, uh, Bellator. Um, we've got Jaleel Dye who's come in and, and there's NFL players in particular that are getting a lot of NAD and ozone therapy and, you know, uh, through us, uh, we also have a number of, um, athletes and also patients in general doing a lot of cancer screening through us, uh, with whole body MRI and some of the protocols that we've developed. But in particular, what we're finding in terms of the athletes is that they are uh, getting NAD because the three drivers of aging and, and, you know, those are one is inflammation, uh, two is tissue repair. Your body doesn't repair itself as much. And then three is actually something called mitochondrial dysfunction. And, you know, as you age, your mitochondria, which are the kind of engines of your cell, don't produce energy like uh, you know, you did when you were 20 or even 30 for that matter. So once you start getting to your late 30s, you get a significant decrease in the function of these mitochondria to be able to produce uh, ATP, which is a, a cofactor for almost every enzyme in your body. And so with that, the NAD is a actual cofactor for producing energy for the mitochondria. So it's been shown to really help with mitochondrial dysfunction, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, a number of a cognitive uh, type of deficits. And so a lot of athletes are getting NAD with ozone therapy because they increase the pool for NAD to really help the mitochondria function better. And they, they sleep better, they have more energy. So we have a lot of patients who come in who don't have um, low testosterone that want to try something to help them uh, get an edge. And it's, it's no different than taking a vitamin B12 shot, but the data is a little bit more compelling. The science, the basic science behind it, there's been papers written in Cell, and in, um, which, is, which is one of the top, you know, really basic science journals as well as science on the, the benefits of NAD therapy. So the, the NAD and ozone seems to be a very popular uh, product. Um, you know, I take it myself as well, and I've noticed quite a bit of difference. Um, but that's oh, to be the, we've had... the one that I think a lot of people seem to really uh, like in particular. All right, we're talking to Dr. Samir Damani. I didn't mean to cut you off, but Alex, we, we've had Phil in the show, haven't we? We had him in. Didn't he come in about, I don't know, a couple of years ago with Paul Vaden? We, we've met him before. Phil Davis, been on the, Phil Davis has been on the show a few times because he's a friend or he's a training partner of Dominic Cruz, who's a friend of the show. But yes, yeah. uh, him and um, Paul Vaden came in studio when Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather to break down the, the nuances of MMA versus boxing. Right, right, right. Yeah, we got to get Phil back on. Doc, I would love to talk to Phil and have him on and kind of compare notes um, as to you know the benefits of the NAD therapy that he's getting through iThrive and the NAD therapy that I'm getting through iThrive. Can you, again, I, I know you were just kind of getting into it, but you're a regular guy out there. You're 40 plus, you've heard about testosterone, you've thought about coming in. Now, all of a sudden, I'm hitting you on the radio and on TV with, well, now I've added NAD. Um, and, and I've asked you to kind of, if you would, dumb it down for us. Just, just make it simple. What does an NAD injection do? I know you just talked about mitochondria and cells, but just in the simplest of terms. Sure, sure. It just helps your cells produce the energy um, that acquire to run the metabolic processes that, that a normal cell has to run. And it's every cell in the body, whether it's the brain, muscles, these all use, uh, need energy, you know, and, and the conversion of, of basic nutrients to energy is assisted by NAD. It's as simple as that. The production of energy um, for the cells, so it helps with just your cells to function better than they would otherwise. So I am taking NAD now, guys. Um, and I, I got to say, Dr. Damani, I feel great. You know, um, 
I just, I feel like I'm sleeping really, really well. I feel like I have very deep sleep. Um, last night I even said to myself, you know what? Um, I had a long weekend when I say long, I mean, I, I, I put a lot in to a short period of time and I want to have energy all week long. And I think I went to bed last night, at like nine 30 in the morning or nine 30 at night, woke up at six o'clock in the morning, yeah. big night of sleep, feel great, deep sleep. And then I do believe that there is a tangible difference in my energy levels since I started taking NAD. I'm working out more. My workouts are better. I feel like I'm a bit stronger. I mean, I don't want to over advertise this stuff. I mean, but I, but I'm telling you, like, I feel like I was able to, to get the immediate impact of NAD. Yeah, no, it's, uh, if you watch on our website there's a three minute video by phil davis actually and as i mentioned he's just won the light heavyweight championship i think was for uh, bellator and he talks exactly about the things that you speak to recovery being better sleep uh your greater amount of deep sleep and you know we encourage all of our patients to get the something called the aura ring which is a ring that tracks your sleep but you're absolutely right i mean i experience the same things i you know i'll, I'll take an nad injection um, you know, sometimes, you know, when I've had, like you said, just a, you know, a, a stretch of high stress, whether it's uh, self-induced or work-related, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the, the impact is very similar for a lot of our patients. So we're hearing them talk about improved sleep, improved recovery, uh, ability to have more energy to work out. All those things are very real. Now, everyone's a little different, you know, um, it's not a pan, it's not a, uh, a panacea, it's not a cure-all, but definitely from a wellness perspective, it attacks one of those three pillars of aging, which is the mitochondria uh, dysfunction. You know, the other two is inflammation and the other one is tissue repair. So if you don't do anything with those two, um, you know, you know, you, you may have really high levels of inflammation. So the NAD may not work as well in that situation because you've got to control the inflammation. And some of that might be from your gut. Some of it might be from other, you know, chronic autoimmune diseases. So there's a lot to go out there, but for a general, uh, generally healthy um, middle-aged person um, who is active and wants to stay active and have vigor, you know, the, the NAD is a, is a good way going about it. All right, um, so I, I have talked Dr. Damani into one thing, Alex, before we, I say I've talked him into it. It didn't take that much. Um, I said, doc, I said, look, we're telling people to go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com to click on, on the iThrive logo, or you can go to iThriveMD.com slash Kaplan and you can find out what iThrive MD services are and things that you can get for free. Like for example, you know, when, when they do work blood work to check, to check your testosterone, they will do that for free. They will, they will make sure they will check your testosterone levels for free. But I said, doc, I love this NAD so much. And I really want to share this with all the guys who watch and who listen. So Dr. Damani and I have come up with a, a little bit of a, a game plan here. Doc, can we get patients, people who are listeners to the show, viewers of the show, people who are going to become new patients at iThrive. Can we get them at least their first NAD injection? Absolutely. And a really good deal. Or, or maybe even, I hate to say, I, I don't mean to take money out of your pocket, Doc, but can we get them an NAD injection so they can feel what I'm feeling? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, we, with the, um, with the free low testosterone test, um, we can absolutely give people a trial, a free trial for a, a single NAD injection while they're in the office just to see how they can feel. Um, you know, but absolutely. I think it's something that, uh, is easy enough for your listeners to who, I'm, who who is an engaged population that really wants to find out how they can really improve their health span and 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 do more to be proactive and prevent them. So yeah, absolutely, we'd love to do that. All right, cool, Alex. You were about to jump in. Excuse me. No, I was going to ask about. Um, we're always you guys say like a, at the around the age of forty, but you said Phil Davis is is one of your clients, and I know he's not forty. So is there a minimum age, or is it? Is individually, that's kind of what you go Great off of. Great question. Great question. So, you know, Phil Davis is in the age of 40, but if you look at the kind of training regimens that, you know, mm -hmm. they go through. So, for example, I won't mention the team, but there's certain teams that I've heard, you know, that are getting, you know, NAD and ozone injections every week, NFL, you know, because the kind of impact that you have, that the, you know, playing football, playing a contact sport like that, taking hits to the head, to the body, um, you deplete your NAD much quicker. And so a lot of athletes, um, you know, Jaleel Adai from the, um, uh, formerly of the 
I don't know where he is right now, uh, but you know he's come in and and you know benefited from the uh, NAD and ozone therapy as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely. You know, it is generally you know for those of us that are not getting hit in the head and you know putting in you know twenty hours of a week, you know, uh, you know physical activity. But those that are, this has been you know a lot of the a lot of those patients really swear by a lot of those athletes really swear by it. So I think you don't have to be above 40 or there's no magic cutoff. I mean, the reality is your NAD and your mitochondria decline in function really starting in your you know upper twenties. So, you know, anybody who's interested in really uh, being able to have that kind of edge, uh, you know, are certainly a, a candidate for it. All right. We're talking to Dr. Samir Damani, I thrive MD and recommending to all the guys out there, come on in, you know, get a testosterone, test, you know, test your levels, see where they are. I still can't believe it, doc. I walk in with this big ego, like, yep, yeah, my testosterone's off the charts. I got lots of energy. I can ride my bike all weekend. I can go for runs. You know, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm pretty active in the bedroom. I feel like I've got high testosterone. Then you guys do the test and my testosterone's low. I'm actually coming in on Friday morning, um, to get a, uh, to get a testosterone injection, but I can deliver those NAD injections to myself at home. So, Right. I'm, lo I'm loving the services. Well, I'm glad you are. And, you know, I think we're looking to kind of help bring, you know, these kind of, uh, you know, performance optimization to the masses. I think it's been used by athletes and, and others for a number of years. Um, those would means, but I think we're looking to really bring it to the masses. You know, I think there's elements of this that can be applied across the population. Yeah, it's interesting, Alex. There was a good question about Phil Davis being being so much younger. We got to get him on the show again. We got to get him back, talk to him about this because he's having a lot of success using it. And uh, as Dr. Damani is saying, there are a lot of NFL teams that are now using because I guess, yeah. Doc, this, this stuff all passes the test, right? I mean, NFL players can take NAD injections and ozone uh, therapy. Well, and and, and it, It's part of every, I mean, it, you know, uh, certainly a lot of hormones are regulated, but, you know, to, to what I know, and again, I don't know the details. Let me be very clear here that I'm not involved at all with these organizations in terms of testing. But from what I hear, um, these are just, you know, cofactors, vitamin, no different than a vitamin B12 shot. And so I, my understanding is that they are not regulated. It'd be hard to test for either way, because it's, it's part of every, like I mentioned, NAD is, is almost a, it's a cofactor for a lot of different uh, processes in your body and testing for it. I'm not sure is, is very, very easy to do either as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I will see you guys on Friday, doctor. I uh, look forward to coming in. I like to come in. I like to get to know everybody in the office. Alex, you know who works uh, in Dr. Doani's office? Who? Uh, the wife of one of our favorite ever San Diego State Aztecs, DJ Gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, DJ Gay's uh, wife nice. works for Dr. Doani. Yeah, she works there in the clinic. So nice. uh, We love having Raquel here. She's great. She's yeah. Great. It's a great crew. Uh, I want to remind everybody. He has, taken, uh, has some NAD injections too. He loves it as well. So he could be he could be another person that can tell you about his experience as well. Did you say DJ was taking NAD? Is that what you said? Yeah, he's had several injections. He loves it. Yeah, he really he really loves it as well. So he could be someone you chat with as well. Well, we we love DJ Gay around here, and we we would, we'll bring him on and talk to him about this, Doctor Samir Damani. I Thrive MD. The website is ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. And as Dr. Damani just told everybody, not only will you get your testosterone levels checked for free, but now they'll give you a complimentary NAD injection just so you can feel the benefits. Doctor, this is the first of many along the way. Thank you. Great appearance. We'll talk to you real soon. Have a great rest of your week. Great. Thanks, guys. All right, great friends here on a Tuesday afternoon. I've got a bunch of stuff I'd still like to get into, and then we'll hand off on radio to Browner and Lawhead tonight. Browner, I already see Lawhead doing a great job on social media of promoting the show and promoting what you guys are talking about. Must be a pleasure to have a partner who actually contributes. It is very refreshing. Very uh, so When both people are pulling, it goes further. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that piece of commentary. You're welcome. Yeah. Dropping gems I, today. 
Really? You are, are you? No. no. <laughs> I'm going to have to get you an NAD injection from Dr. Damani, I think is what's going to have to happen. No, bro. Listen, I already told you. Until I need it, I don't need it. <laughs> You are dropping gems. All right. Hey, we got a bunch of stuff we want to get to, including how the NBA is having their media days all over the country. And it seems like there's a battle going on between the media and the players. In fact, Alex, you sent us yesterday a Rolling Stone article that I've heard referenced many times, where essentially what this Rolling Stone article says is you got a bunch of guys that are NBA players that are refusing to get vaccinations. And they're, they're calling it like an internal civil war amongst players in the NBA and the players union and the league. And I wound up reading that article. Well, I read it last night till I fell asleep. And then I read the rest of it this morning. <laughs> that, was a, that was a long ass article, buddy. That was a long article. So yeah, but it had some gems in there, man. It had some real, like some real WTF head scratching moments. That yeah. article was uh, something else, dude. Something well, what, else. what stood out to you? I'm just curious. I mean, you say some WTF head scratchers. That's oh, right here. All right. Uh, Kyrie Irving, a lot of Kyrie Irving in that article. Mm -hmm. Irving, who serves as vice president on the executive committee of the Players Union, recently started following and liking Instagram posts from conspiracy theorists who claim that, quote, secret societies are implanting vaccines in a plot to connect black people to a master computer for a, quote, plan of Satan. <laughs> this Moderna microchip and misinformation campaign has spread across multiple NBA locker rooms and group chats, according to several of the dozen plus current players, Hall of Famers, league, league executives, arena workers, virologists interviewed for this story over the past week. Yeah. Yeah. I liked what Kareem Abdul-Jabbar said in this Rolling Stone article, which was essentially, um, you guys look stupid. Yes. I mean, that, that's what he said. He goes, you guys look <laughs> yeah. dumb. You're perpetuating a, a stereotype that you're just too dumb to be able to do your own research and to find out whoa, whoa, that, whoa, well, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 listen, the King said he did his own research and determined that getting the vaccine was the best thing for him, his friends, and his family. So not all NBA players that did their own research concluded that they were too dumb. Okay. I would say this. Uh, and there's one person. There's one person I want to give some respect to. Jonathan Isaac. Jonathan Isaac plays for the Orlando Magic. Also refuses to get the shot. One, because he had COVID. But the reason why I want to give Jonathan Isaac proper due respect, even though I disagree with him, he said his piece. He said he's not getting it. He didn't hide behind anything. He gave an eloquent, descriptive answer. After the research that he's done personally, he came to the conclusion that he feels like he doesn't need to get the shot. I disagree with him, but I respect his decision. And more people, if you're going to not get it, you should be able to give a real concise answer as to the research you've done and why you did not get it. I reposted it on my Twitter account if anybody's looking for it. It was a very good answer by Jonathan Isaac, even though I disagree with it. You know, I actually agree with you, Browner. Um, Alex can play it for everybody. And the kid's name is what's it? Because I have never heard of him before. Jonathan what's his name? Isaac. He okay, was Jonathan in that Rolling Isaac. Stone article a lot as well. I, yes. I read that article in Rolling Stone. I saw his name. And the whole time I'm thinking to myself, I know LeBron James. I know Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. I mean, I know the stars, but I don't know who this guy is. But I saw his press conference and I thought to myself, look, if you don't want to get the vaccine, that's your business. OK, I disagree. I'll continue to disagree. I'm annoyed by guys like Kyrie Irving. Yeah. OK, I, th he annoys the hell out of me. And I'll tell you something else. If I were the owner of the Brooklyn Nets, I honestly would probably be starting to think to myself, you know what? I would trade him. They try to trade him for he ben to retire. Call it a day. Yeah. Hey, listen, you know what? He wants to retire. Go retire. That's fine. He won't also, do it. I'll play the clip, but I don't think Jonathan Isaac gets a jet, get out of jail free card just because he can speak really good English. Like, All right, well, that doesn't well, do it for me. No, <laughs> sorry. For, for me, for me, his get out of jail free card was more was more like look, his eloquence not, does nothing for me. <laughs> but but I, for me, what I listened to Jonathan Isaac, what I liked was I'm not a conspiracy theory guy. Right. I didn't get my information from watching this or watching that. I've made up my own mind here. Go ahead and play yeah. Jonathan Isaac, who, by the way, most people are going to hear his voice for the first time and hear his name for the first time mm -hmm. and have no idea who he played for. But here is this young man. And here's what he had to say. Uh, I'm, I'm not anti-vax. I'm not anti-medicine. I'm not anti-science. Uh, I didn't come to my current vaccination status by studying black history or watching Donald Trump press conferences. 
I have nothing but the utmost respect for every healthcare um, worker and person in Orlando and all across the world that have worked tirelessly to keep us safe. Um, my mom has worked in healthcare for a really long time. Um, I thank God I'm grateful that I live in a society where vaccines are possible and we can uh, uh, protect ourselves and have the means to protect ourselves for the first in the first place. Um, but with that being said, it is my belief that the, the vaccine status of every person should be their own choice um, and completely up to them without the without bullying, without being pressured or without being forced into doing so. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm uncomfortable with taking the vaccine at this time. I think that we're all different. We all come from different places. We've all had different experiences and hold dear to different beliefs. And uh, what it is that you do with your body when it comes to putting medicine in there uh, should be your choice, um, free of the ridicule and the opinion of others. All right. You, uh, you're you not giving him a get out of jail free card. I, I just had respect for I mean, him, you, every, like holding his, his, his line, you know? He said all these these things. I'm not anti-vax. I'm not anti-science. I'm not. I didn't learn it from Black Lives Matter. I didn't learn it from Trump. Blah 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 blah. And then he used that magic word. But I don't believe what they're telling me. I don't believe anything that the doctors are telling me. I don't believe in the in the whatever whatever. Which is fine. It's his belief. And I totally. If you're a private citizen and you and you believe what Jonathan Isaac believes, I don't care. But if I'm the Orlando Magic owner, if I'm now, the Orlando Pastor Magic the coaching staff. If I'm the Orlando Magic fans, that's where I care. And I, like I said, if Kyrie basketball, if Kyrie basketball, if Kyrie Irving didn't play <laughs> basketball, I wouldn't care that he doesn't believes he would. Right, right. Doesn't matter to me. Like, so, like with Andrew Wiggins, I, I actually 100% agree that Jonathan Isaac, what he said, it's my body. It should be my choice. I don't have to explain it to anybody. I don't have. Correct. If you were a private citizen, that where these rules were not a, a, applied against you. By your job. So when mm -hmm. Andrew Wiggins, he doesn't have like what he, I had no problem with the way Andrew Wiggins approached it yesterday because I don't think Andrew Wiggins has to tell the media and the public why he decided he needs to tell Joe, Joe Lacob, the owner. He needs to tell Bob Myers, the GM, and he needs to tell Steve Kerr, the coach, why he's not doing it and then live with that. So I will say, yes, he explained himself where great, better than I guess publicly better than Kyrie did, but it doesn't mean that he's right. No, because I got he's you. Gonna cost whoa, whoa, whoa. Himself, so, he's going to cost himself all these opportunities to play for his team. Let's be clear. I, I'm stating I disagree with what he's saying. I respect it. R right or wrong, that's out of our hands at this point. What a person chooses to do under, un, in this situation is their business. Now, we, I also 100% agree with you, Alex. The Orlando Magic don't have to agree with that because that's his employer. Mm -hmm. So if your employer says to you or the state of Florida says to you or the city of Orlando says during a mass sporting event, if it's in closed doors, we want those people participating or, or viewing to be vaccinated. Right. He's See, now in having, a whole world of trouble. Right. We're not having a discussion. And I don't want to have the discussion whether vaccination mandate should be applied. That's not right. what we're talking about. We're right. talking about these rules are in place. They're going to be in place. Yes. So if an NBA player chooses not to follow these rules, they will have major consequences right. in certain areas of it. this country. Right. And so, I'll tell you, it, 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 what, well, keep going. Excuse me. Keep going. No, I'm just saying like, so I disagree with Andrew Wiggins not taking it because he's costing his team. He's costing himself. And that's really what it comes down to it. That's yeah, it. I like don't, I don't he, really care if he costs himself. I care about him costing the team. And I don't really even care about the team. I'm just saying if I were a fan of the team. But I noticed this. And tell me if you guys think this. I feel like there's a, a, a war coming here. And I think that war is the me, the media versus the players. Um, I feel like the media has this feeling of, I had to get vaccinated. For me to walk into that arena, I have to be vaccinated. Why don't you? How come I have to protect you, but you don't have to protect me? And I feel like, like the media is looking at the players a certain way, and then the players are giving it back to the media a certain way. Like, for example, here, play Kyrie Irving, who, again, I find him to be the most annoying human being in all of sports. I can't think of anybody that I dislike more as an athlete. I don't know him as a dude. Right. I'm not saying I hate his guts. I'm not wishing bad on the guy. Okay, so forget about all that. I think I agree with you now that Paul Pierce is gone. I, I find him to be the most annoying guy there is. He he talks about himself in third person. He thinks he's a so much bigger of a star and a cultural icon than he is. He's a basketball player. That's it. 
You know, he watches the news. He gets upset. He can't play basketball anymore. Play, play Kyrie Irving and, and how he treats the media as they're peppering him with questions about vaccination, mostly because he can't play in New York. If, if in the you, spirit if you, of, of not putting limitations right. on the future, do you expect to play in home games in New York considering the, the rules in this state? Again, I would like to keep all that private. Please just, just respect my privacy. Like uh, all the questions kind of leading into what's happening, you know, just please, uh, everything will be released at a, at a due date. And uh, once we get this cleared up, but as of right now, just please respect my privacy regarding anything around home games, what's happening, vaccination, please. I hate the fact that he says that. Please respect my privacy. What about my privacy? I, I'm somebody I'm somebody who's covering this game, covering this team. I've got a job to do. And for me to walk into that arena, you know where I am because I had to have a vaccination to get in. What about my privacy? How come my privacy is not as important as your privacy? That is such I, BS. I think people I'm not I think individual Kyrie Irving. I'm gonna say people like Kyrie Irving. I want to be very specific. I think Kyrie Irving is on his way to not playing basketball anymore. And I don't think anyone's gonna care. These other things that Kyrie Irving is interested in seem to be far more important to him than basketball. And Kareem Abdul Jabbar is 100% right. The, the 90% of the NBA is vaccinated. So that leaves about 60 to 70 guys who are not vaccinated. And that, that's a very, very small majority, a small minority of people. And I don't want that to overshadow what the NBA has done in getting guys vaccinated and officials and coaches and things of that nature. But for this guy to be it, charge of any form of player association anything needs to be changed quickly quickly because he's the same guy by the way and i don't think people are forgetting this he didn't want the bubble to happen because they wouldn't allow him to go because he wasn't vaccinated and so he used his power on the players association to try to have the bubble not happen at all because they told him he could not go because he wasn't vaccinated Kyrie Irving cares about Kyrie Irving. And if you think the earth is flat like he does, then that's when he'll care about you. But if you don't, then he doesn't care. He's the most aloof person that I, I, I think I've seen as an athlete as well. Like, I think go it's all away. I think it's all an act, and, I, and I'm with you. If he nev if he retired and never played basketball again, who, nobody would care. No one I'll would make care. you – but, but here's, my, here's, here's my guarantee. You ready for this? He will get vaccinated. Oh, yeah. Well, he, here's the – I don't know, because here's the problem for the NBA. He's in a position of power. He's the vice president of the NBA PA executive committee. So he has a voice. He has a platform to yeah. not only where he can say what he wants, where it has meaning. Dude, and not, yes. dude, he will get and vaccinated. Players agree with him. Yesterday, he will get vaccinated. Angelo Russell was like, Kyrie's the GOAT. Like, oh, I'm telling you, players also, agree with also him. A, yeah. But again, D'Angelo Russell is an idiot. And this is the this but is there's the a lot problem. of idiots in the NBA is my point. So but, they have a, and they that's have a problem. The, that's the <laughs> underlining problem in this. These are guys who are stupid following another guy who doesn't want to be followed. And that's the problem. Dude, Kyrie he'll get vaccinated. wants to do the thing that Kyrie does. Watch. Just watch, though. Because when, when Kevin Durant eventually starts to apply pressure and go, hey, brother, I get it. It was your choice, and it was cute, and it was fun, and you stood for what you wanted to stand for. But, bro, we're trying to win a championship this you year. You want to hear Kevin Durant? Yeah, go ahead. Let's hear it. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Are you concerned about his availability at home games going forward? No. <laughs> so you expect that not to be an issue? I expect it not to be. I don't mean I'm, that's, that's on Kyrie, and that's his personal decision. What he does is not on us to speculate what what may happen, but we trust in Kyrie, and I expect us to have our whole team at some point. You're right. You will have your whole team at some point. Let him get it out of the way. Yep. Let him make his stand. Let him prove to everybody that he's not going to have his privacy invaded. But when you see him playing in Brooklyn, you will know that Kevin Durant went to Kyrie and said, hey, man, we're That's trying enough. to win a championship here. If If you're not going to get the vaccination, and you're going to miss 41 games, and you're going to miss all of our home games, bro, we don't have a use for you. We'll trade you. I'll be curious to see what comes first. I'll be curious to see if they, if they, I guess, buckle to the pressure of the NBA, or if actually we continue the decline of cases and cities remove that mandate. Like, I'd be very curious to see which one comes first.
New York, but but the thing is, you're right. The decline will come before the ruling changes. But the, San Francisco's not changing that rule. And New York, damn sure, New York just fired every nurse in the state that is not vaccinated. They're not changing their rule because of some Yo, basketball happening. players. It's happening here. I, I know we got a short time. But, uh, it's happening here in San Diego. Have you guys been to places where you got to, like, digitally input your information to make sure, like, not only do you have vaccination, but that it's actually you? Like I went to one. I've of had the, to show a, my ID to, along with my with my vaccination card. I've had to do that a couple of times. Yeah, I don't have I went, a problem with that. Yeah, I went to a, a bar Friday night after the game where if you didn't have your vaccine card, you could scan a QR code, enter your own information, and it validates that that you are vaccinated to get in. Wow, that's hey, listen, good. You know what? That's protecting yes. all of us. Yes. You know, I went to. I, I went, went in there. A, I felt fine. Oh, yeah, guys, cool. I went to a bar. Uh, you guys know the bar I like to hang out at up in yeah. Cardiff called the Kraken. I went in there on Friday night last week. I looked around and I went, nobody's wearing a mask. Okay, not not that I'm surprised. Everybody's shoulder to shoulder. Place is hot and sweaty. Band is jamming, and nobody cares. You know, now <laughs> I don't care because I've I've been I don't care because I've been double vaxxed and I've already had a breakthrough case. So every immunologist that I've spoken to is like, you're fine. Nothing There's happened to place- you. There's a place in South Park called Whistle Stop. Whistle Stop does this thing called Booty Basement. Is where oh, they yeah. play pop music. It's disgusting in there. It is as disgusting as the Kraken, okay? Mm-hmm. They check your vaccine card and your ID before you go in the door. That yeah. It's on the flyer, and everyone yeah. knows it. When but you people go can in fake there, their vaccine cards now, yeah. There is a sense That's of relief. That's why I thought the QR code was interesting. There's a sense of relief once you get in there of, right. I can have a good time. I don't have to worry about mask or people bumping into right. each other and, and that yeah. gets but but browner that gets us back to the nba if all the fans have to be vaccinated if all the media has to be vaccinated if the referees the coaches the trainers the security guards if everybody working in food services has to be vaccinated in the arena why are the players being given different treatment they're just human beings just like Kyrie says hey the i'm NBA, a human being because of the nba the nba pa says it's a non-starter because of guys like Kyrie who are on the committee well, that is a bunch of BS, man. And it and you know what? It it's a turnoff. It makes people get turned off by the yep. NBA. And seriously, NBA, NBA fans. These or, aren't people yes. who or, won't watch because they won't stand for the anthem or Black Lives Matter. These aren't those people. The people who they're making mad now are people who actually watch and pay. Yeah. Never mind. All right. Let's uh let's wrap up and hand off to Browner and and Lawhead. But before we do, it is time right now, everybody, for the Tory Holistics. Highlight of the day, man. Let's no, do this. No time for the intro. So I'll just say go to uh, kaplanandcrew.com, click that Tory Holistics banner, and you're going to get 20% off today, tomorrow, and Thursday with the promo code Brown Man. Brown Final man. three days, Brown yeah. Man. 20% and we, savings 20% when you spend savings. 75 or more. And when yep, we come back go, on Monday, man. it'll be something else with the B. All right, guys. Uh, hey, Scott, how yep. about I just toss it to you? Okay. Talk about your Zimmer boys. All right, here goes. And I hope you have the highlight. I know you do. do. Let me just say a shout out to my friend, Dr. Eric Zimmer. Here's a guy who's an anesthesiologist from La Jolla who had two sons, both played high school baseball at La Jolla High. So these were not kids that grew up poor, but by any means, okay? They didn't grow up rich, but they didn't, and they grew up, you know, a nice, healthy life. But let me tell you something. Played high school baseball at La Jolla High, played college baseball at the University of San Francisco, Both brothers were first round draft choices. And finally, after all of these years, injuries and all kinds of problems along the way, both boys are finally major league ball players. And the Kansas City Royals were playing the Cleveland Indians. And watch what happened when brother pitching to brother hitting. Watch this. Kyle Zimmer hands at the belt. He lets it fly. Swung in and blasted! High! Deep to right! Away! Back! Gone! (laughs) Yep. Bradley Zimmer, the little brother, who was destined to be a star about four or five years ago and has battled all kinds of injuries, has finally made his way back to the major leagues. And big brother Kyle Zimmer, who was the fifth overall pick in the Major League Baseball draft, has dealt with all kinds of arm injuries, is finally at the big league level. Brother versus brother. I think it happened three or four times this year. But little brother taking big brother deep. That's our highlight of the day, man. It's presented by Tory Holistics, where I think big brother is going to have to go with me to Tory Holistics to find something to get over that. There's got to be a different word for deep, dude, because that thing went super freaking far, man. Like that was a blast out of there.
and it didn't even look like he swung hard, and, yeah. it, and it was an off-speed pitch. So congratulations, to the little Z brother. There? Dr. Z was not there, oh. but I was like, Z, I don't know. Do I, do I text Bradley? Congratulations. Do I, do I text Kyle? I'm so sorry. I didn't know what to do, but there's your highlight of the day. All right. Coming up on radio, Browner and Lawhead is next. For those of you that are listening on podcast or watching on YouTube, we'll have a separate ending for you guys over here. Browner, have a great show with Lawhead and we are back manana, everybody. Peace out. All right, guys, we're going to wrap things up. You know, we wound up getting, um, I felt like things were going really great in today's show. Like we had a lot of good content. We were talking football. We were talking baseball, had John Clayton on, Dr. Damani stopped by. And then I feel like because of the guesting, we didn't have a whole bunch of stories that we were going to get to. We'll talk about this tomorrow, but how about this rumor? You ready for this? Former Chargers head coach, Anthony Lynn, now offensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions. And everybody's starting to buzz about him as a possibility as the head coach for USC. Are, are they crazy? I'll burn my USC? jersey. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll do, the old, I'll do the old soccer thing. I will burn my wow. jersey like it's LeBron James, dude. My God. Can that, that, listen, he can't be a head coach. We just saw it. Like in that's LA. What they said about Pete Carroll, dog. That's no, what they said about that's Pete not what, No, it's no, no. He, you it's know who no. he's not? Kind of the, it's <laughs> kind of the same trajectory. No, no, no. You know who he's not? And, and I think this is what USC wants, but I'll tell you who. Anthony Lynn is not Deion Sanders. He's not Deion Sanders. That's Lane true. Kiffin. He's not Lane Kiffin. That is true. But I'm going to give you a different name. He's not Herm Edwards. Ooh. That's Let me. Mm. Here's why. Here, Herm Edwards is he still had. There? He's still at Arizona yes. State. Mm. You barely hear about him. Okay. But what Herm Edwards had when Arizona State hired him was enough TV FaceTime that young kids would know who he is. Mm -hmm. Anthony Lynn doesn't have that. Now, if Anthony Lynn left the Chargers, got fired by the Chargers and went to ESPN and had two or three years of being a really, really entertaining analyst, that would be different. But Anthony Lynn, as a mediocre NFL head coach, really just getting to learn what it is to be an offensive coordinator in Detroit, and thus far he doesn't have a very good team, I think USC has the right idea. What I mean by that is, whether you're talking about Eric Bieniemy of the Chiefs or Anthony Lynn of the Lions, job. a younger, and I say younger, they can be in their early 50s. Say the word. A, a young, middle-aged, okay. a younger, you want, you want a different word. Yeah. The B word. Yeah. A black man. Thank you. That's what SC is thinking. Thank you. We want to hire a younger black man who can communicate with the black athlete who, according to the reports, Clay Helton didn't want to go into the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Clay Helton didn't have a, a relationship with that sort of a young athlete. I'm black. I've coached in the NFL. I've played in the NFL. I've been around stars. They're, I suppose they're thinking if we're going to keep everybody home in LA, they know who he was because he coached the Chargers, but that's not. there's nothing there. But I think USC I hate this wants what you, you think it's wrong, by the way, or do you think it's what which part of no, it? I, I don't want Anthony Lynn. I, you talk to me about Eric Bianami all you want. Sure, great, fine. Not Anthony Lynn. Not for a head coach. No, thank you. He doesn't know when to call a timeout. No, <laughs> that's running around. He's never recruited. Coaching circle. He's never recruited. Right. He's not gonna get this all star staff. No. Right. Right. No. But you do understand that everything is trending towards look. Then this go get is the LA. offensive coordinator from Clemson. He's black. If that's well, really what concerns I mean, that's not really just the, the criteria, not just he's black. Well, he's the offensive coordinator at Clemson. He's got credentials. He's in the game. I know Clemson sucks this year, but he's in the and game. There we go. Before but and after Trevor Lawrence. He, he helped recruit the quarterback that went to Clemson, who's from LA, and DJ Ugalele or whatever his name is. Like he's yeah. terrible. there's actual other there's candidates. They have their pick of the litter, and their Anthony Lynn is even reported is it, it's disgusting. Well, that? I mean, look again. I think that they nothing think, against Anthony Lynn. This is the most bad he's ever been about anything. I can't believe I know, this. I know, but I, but I, have I really a think that for USC football. But I really think that SC feels like we had a white guy coach. We've had a series of white guy coaches. A long the run. most the most recent guy didn't want to go into the tougher neighborhoods, the lower income neighborhoods, and recruit those kinds of players. And we need somebody who's willing and capable. It and you know what that person should be? Young. High profile and African-American. No, I, but he's in his 50s. 
He's middle. He's at the end of his. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> According to Browner, he's no, about done. What makes me mad is that you probably talking to, to the AD and you're probably speaking facts. That's what makes me mad. No, I'm not. I'm not talking to him like this. Okay. okay. But I will. I will. Browner, what's that smile? I'd rather have Deion Sanders than Anthony Lynn. That's for damn sure. Me too. Dude, listen, listen. Deion Sanders is my first choice. Uh, Eric is my second choice. After that, I don't give a damn who Dude, they hire. I Anthony really Lynn's going to be like the opposite corner of an 0 and 17 football team. Close. Close. They'll Maybe 1 and 16. Yeah. But, anyways, I don't know. Do they, they, play, they play the Bears this week, having, don't they? We were Doesn't having Detroit? such a great. We were having it such might a great be one. Day. Yeah. All right. Listen, we're out of here. We got to wrap it up like We got to roll. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.